way isn't that how we do it it's just way more fun when we come into these like absolutely struggling to figure out what it is that we were going to try and talk about so and 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 getting into just a conversation trying to make it look like we know no i'm just kidding (laughs) like make it like we don't know what we're doing no um we were actually i mean someone just paid me a really nice compliment on some other podcast like well what you have to understand is juan really knows what he's talking about like wow I, I really felt I've spent the last couple of years trying to tell people, like, I'm a perpetual apprentice at all of this stuff. <laughs> but that is the kindest thing anyone's ever said about me. So thank you. <laughs> I, they value the, the your content, man, and they value uh, what you bring to the table. And, you know, that's the some of the best compliments I think most of us can look for. So, really. so, I, 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 so everybody, thank you for tuning in to another Best of Our Week where TK Absolutely. and I ramble <laughs> through what we thought was the best tech of our week. Um, Stumble, I was ramble. Stumble. Yes, and, and like like Sorry. like just blind babes in the <laughs> dark of internetting. Um, no, Ooh, I, uh, I, I was a couple <laughs> couple minutes late because yeah. I was watching through my new doorbell camera the saga of someone dropping off food on our porch that we did not order. <laughs> and then one of our neighbors like coming to take the food off of our porch and looking around like he was he was like afraid of being caught like stealing yeah they're but gonna, like, I, uh, and i'm sitting there watching right there. this whole thing unfold and i feel like i should go out there and talk to him but i've got to get set up for the podcast but oh i should tell him it's okay but the windows over there i don't think he'd hear me if i just started yelling if i just started yelling he'd be acting like i was trying to attack oh, him or drop, something i don't know what to do no, no, no. you could talk to him through the ring, through the doorbell and then he could just leave the food and run the other way didn't have enough time because he does like the little skulk up and then i get the alert and by the time i got the alert on the doorbell he was already kind of skulking away felt so bad for him too because like you could tell like it was a really nice barbecue place that that he'd ordered from too so you you want that to be good mistake, like you want that to be order his... yeah you want that to be the order yeah, yeah. yeah. no i'm with you i'm with you <laughs> uh, it's like uh so you know weird enough uh i had something kind of similar happen to me this week we have some people working mm-hmm. in our house and they ordered food through grubhub so they deliver the food and they drop the food at the door and i'm going up to the front door and i'm like I didn't order any food. And then they're like, that's not for me. And obviously, this is not for you, JC. Uh, but this is for Juan, the other gentleman that's working here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to call you JC now because you're like, I have too many Juans in my life. To- totally get uh, it. It's a very yeah, common uh, name. It is. But how? I mean, yeah, but Juan Carlos is very unique if you think about it that way. So JC, Juan Carlos, you know, makes it unique. And we fit there. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> Juan, and TK. Um uh, Ralph, good evening, everybody. I will say this. Let's let's uh, let's jump through the uh, shenanigans of my mistaken delivery order. Um, welcome back to the best of our week. It is um, a pleasure for all of us, obviously, here to be able to have you guys with us, and of course, hang out with Juan one more time for another week, uh, and of course, talk some tech. Um, mm-hmm. Quite a few things kind of been happening this week, and it's been a busy week for both of us. Um, you know, pushing out content, talking about devices. We both had an opportunity ha- mm-hmm. had an opportunity to play with uh, the Poco M4 5G. The I think how did you say? Yeah, I forgot it? to the, pull mine. No, you you the, keep the actual, talking. I... Yeah, the actual M4 that we've been waiting for um, uh, since and... November of last year. Yeah, yeah, because we've had <laughs> multiple variations. I have no idea where I put it. Hold on. Oh my god! Keep, 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 you keep vamping. I'm going to try and find the phone so I can do that thing where we hold it up to the camera for no good reason. No, no a- a- absolutely. So we had an opportunity both to play with that, and of course, um, I had an opportunity also to get a chance to test out Android 13 uh, in beta form on ColorOS devices. Obviously, the Find X5 Pro pushed out a couple of videos there, and then of course, um, Juan had an opportunity to play with some light power power on the go backup solution with. Um, some interesting battery. solar panels that apparently will fit entire the entirety of, of Juan's office. Because super cheap, how... not great solar panels, but they, they were they super look like, cheap. But, but they look like they're the size of like what you see on top of roofs. That's how big. Like I'm used to seeing smaller, uh, more compact, but it was a trifold and it looked like it needed to be propped and sat in the Oh, it was a quad and... fold and I couldn't oh, even quad. finish oh. unfolding it in the office. It's, well, that's it's all that. I, yeah, I saw, I saw that. I am not tall enough to hold up. <laughs> say anything you know boom box at the end i can't i can't let all four go um we'll 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 cover that in just a bit um a i really bit. feel we 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 should uh we should tag out this uh this poco conversation because yeah um, yeah, yeah, we yeah. both we both got a little chance to play with the phone mm-hmm. uh yep. xiaomi sent the phones to us like like a month ago 
I, and then only sent the embargo date like a week before it was time to go. I had no idea when I was going to be there was some able to talk about this phone. Yeah, yeah. There was there were some scheduling things for sure. Um, I'll say this: if you watched my video, you can tell when I was when I was able to test it because you know I had it back when we were at the you know the Peterson Museum. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. how long ago I've had it. Same. Um, it, it's a device that I would say is definitely trying to hit a very specific target market. It's a budget-friendly device. It's absolutely, this is not a uh, you know mid-ranger performance. It's intended to fit a certain budget. It's intended for specific markets, so it's not going to be available everywhere. But I feel like for what it offers, for the for the performance and the price that it offers, it's actually a good device for like a first timer mm -hmm. or somebody getting a smartphone. Um, Can you I imagine also this is it. like a student phone? I oh, mean, dude! I, absolutely, content the, the, consumption the for all the time there is, yeah, yeah. is absolutely astounding. Five thousand milliampere battery and and that type of display. And a Dimensity yeah. seven hundred. And, and I know, like, oh, but there are other mid rangers that are more powerful. And yeah, they're a little bit more expensive. And I get that you can get older phones for less money too. But when oh, we're absolutely. talking about that purpose built, I mean, because again, I, I feel like Poco has risen above just entry level. This isn't like a totally disposable lowest grade HMD oh, Nokia no, no, phone. Absolutely. It no. is a it is a bit pricier than that, but this is the tier of phone that used to be uh like stylo territory, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If it was a MediaTek, it was a MediaTek P35. If it was a Qualcomm, it was a ridiculously underpowered Qualcomm 400 four, series. Absolutely, 4 series. And yeah. and playing with something like this, I know there are still bits and pieces that we would we would hope to see continue to improve. Mm -hmm. But the amount of tech that has slid down to this price tier, which is which used to be proper mid ranger and is mm -hmm. now yeah, yeah. more in that entry level, is is actually a really exciting trend. Um, I can still get super excited about ultra tier phones. It's that costs like fourteen hundred dollars, yeah, but yeah. that is a very narrow window of I love this camera sensor and its bleeding edge tech. Mm -hmm. This is mid ranger fare getting squished to lower and lower prices, and I think Poco is one of the companies that I think is doing the best at kind of managing that as a brand identity. Oh, absolutely. And I think the the part spinning that we've seen, you know, the the, the implementation of basically re, you know using parts and bringing them into pricing to lower price point, I think has been working for them. The bang for the buck has been kind of almost like a motto for me. Every time I think of a Poco, I almost I almost instinctively know that what they are offering in this experience is worth more than what they're asking for. Um, so it goes without surprise great media consumption uh, large display obviously you know um, the the refresh rate and and the performance that we get on this device is obviously fitting what a poco is trying to give us gaming is actually pretty decent the 700 is not the most powerful performer but it plays pubg like a champ there's no problem and touch responsiveness actually on the display was surprisingly well which is very nice for me um what are you talking about everyone knows that at 4000 dollar phones every two months yeah no of course it, it is always in that manner um, but yeah, I mean, so I threw up in my mouth just thinking about a poor person phone. So, <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's what David was was sort of alluding do, to. Do, do, uh, yeah, no, I know. And do, do they even connect to the internet? Do they need the internet? No, uh, I think for the most part. I think what we see here now is Poco is just leveraging different styles. They're going into the gaming. They're going into you know, uh, flagship experience. You know, the Gen One with the F Four, the F Series, the uh, the mm -hmm. M Series. The so for me, I, I like what they're offering. And so yeah, if Nvidia can I don't know focus if because of the 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 big reflective. It's not it's not Nvidia. This is Panasonic. Oh, I don't sorry. know that the Panasonic will focus so well. Because oh, I, I thought it was the uh, Nvidia Studio that was. Now, if I out. hold perfectly still, I really like this new design language. This yep. is yet another subtle tweak on that full width camera back. Um, yeah, yeah. I really, really like that. But then it's got just a bit of an edge to it that feels a lot like the Pixel visor. So it kind of tapers down to the sides instead of just being a hard lump rectangle that goes across the back. Kind of like yeah, yeah. also what Vivo was doing um, on the 9 Pro. I'm pointing to my desk like you can see the stack we could, of Vivos we, we <laughs> on my desk right now. I am so swamped. I am so behind on all these videos. Uh, Vivo deck sitting on the side. Yeah, but yeah. I really like this design language. It's a grippy, kind of a textured material back, full width camera bar. It doesn't mm -hmm. rock on your table. But now it kind of curves and tapers like the pixels do. I I'm here I'm here. This this is this is it. Mm -hmm. I, I want more phones like this. I kind of wish my 12s ultra were built more like this phone than mm -hmm. the curved glass thing that the most expensive phones need to be 
No, no, absolutely. And I think, um, so for Michael Corrigan's uh, question is like, how many pokers have been released this year? I want to say about four. Too many five, count. Well, four or five. I don't, I don't, think, six, you, I don't think you can count them. No, I mean, I, I think well, it's for physically the ones, impossible to count them all. I was about to say, it's for the ones that we saw too, depending on it. Some of them may not have been international releases. So it's, we probably don't usually see those. Yeah, it's, uh, there's really no way to know. <laughs> the, the <pairs> of <laughs> I tried uh, I tried counting one time uh, and I ran out of count. numbers. <laughs> like apparently numbers can stop and that's that's at the tier of how many and, releases and we are Poco we are almost at the end year. of august and and numbers are not stopping um since oh the there's gonna be through, more you know they're oh, gonna no, come no. out with like five more phones what before I did appreciate the end of the year that it, at least it came out with android 12 um it does have obviously the latest yes, uh, features that we got yeah we're for starting sure. moving up we're no longer having to wait for that update um but speaking of Android also, you know, obviously since last time when we hung up, uh, we had obviously Android 13 that was rolling out. A whole bunch of devices mm -hmm. were getting it. Uh, we're starting to see OEM beta versions of uh, Android 13 coming out. Sure. So it's exciting to see that Android 13 is no longer coupled to an opera, to a device release. Like we're months before uh, the Pixel 7 and obviously not even close to, well, it's about a month later than what we saw with the Pixel 6a. Um, surprisingly, very nice. I, I tried... I downloaded on my 6A and all my devices for the for the ones I was able to get my hands on. So Omar's device, mm -hmm. my devices. Uh, so it's exciting. So trying to rope it in, basically saying is it's exciting to see that these features are there. Hopefully, with new devices from Poco, will we start sh showcasing Android 13 with MIUI 13 or maybe 14, depending how that goes. We'll have um, to see. I, I'm. I mean, like, I I don't mean to sound dismissive on people sure. that are concerned about things like software support, but I mean, I feel like. At this point, if you're mm -hmm. tech savvy at all, you've got to know you're going into the conversation on a Poco with a very different kind of idea on things like longer term and operating yeah. system updates and software support. And and for me, I, I'm kind of OK if the lower tier of Poco devices maybe don't get the best kind of operating system attention. I would much rather that company be putting what few resources they obviously spend on software towards security patches. That's yeah. where I really feel, even if you're not spending a lot, you shouldn't be more vulnerable for owning a less expensive phone. You shouldn't have to worry about exploits or bugs yep. or compromises or anything exactly. like that. Yeah, yeah. And so if, if, you know, my Poco M4 from November of last year never gets Android 12. I'm fine with that, but I would hope that it continues to at least get a security patch every two or three months to try, to at least even just give the the appearance of trying to help someone who bought yeah. a more affordable phone um, not be as as uh, sort, of, sort of vulnerable out there with with internet and bugs it, and security threats i think your your point is obviously very yes absolutely very valid i was in more in more um i guess what i was trying to allude to at the bit at the, with that comment originally was more so um i actually kind of want to see what poco does or what xiaomi does with me y13 on android 13 oh yeah like, will, no, no, will, no. They, will they I'm have a totally... drastic change yeah, I'm totally Sorry. curious to see because, I mean, again, you were playing with Color OS and we've been playing with Android 13 on Pixel betas. Um, there's a there, there are one UI betas out with Android 13, right? There's one, one UI, UI beta 5, 5 is out. Uh, one UI beta 5 um, doesn't. Or one I mean, UI yeah. 5 beta. Five. Sorry, I had that reversed. <laughs> beta 5. Um, yeah, no. But but it's no, you, beta I'm, five, I'm, beta one. I I completely agree with you. I just mean like coming out of that Poco conversation was 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 kind of specific. Where if it's Xiaomi, I have a very different expectation. That is a different label. You spend way more on Xiaomi products, and I expect oh, mm -hmm. that there yeah, should be um, a, a a bit more visible direct uh, conversation with their with their customers. I was more focused on like Redmi Poco. Yeah, that yeah. that I mean, if it's nice that the Poco M four what is it poco m4 5g is the one that we just reviewed yep. it's nice that it has android 12 i really don't care that the m4 pro or m4 pro 5g lacked android 12. they're both i still think they're both still on android 11. don't yeah. care can't be bothered that Actually, phone will never get android 13. it's not going to make me sad in the slightest uh, uh, my I me 11 though i will be very upset if i don't see some timely action on a me 11 getting android 13 sometime next year so, so probably early again next i think year, i think yeah. it's just perspective and and what my expectations are was all i was trying to so, say totally and then one thing i would probably say is 
Android uh, ColorOS thir uh, 13, it would be coming to a device near you uh, in another month or so. So you'll be able to, t if you'd like to test out the beta, it'll be uh, it'll be one of those things you could try. But um, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm I, the, the reason why I'm actually kind of mentioning the, the the intrigue of Android 13 and why I'm kind of like looping in the conversation a little bit is we're we're noticing that on Pixel devices, Android 13 doesn't really feel that much different. I mean, there's a few tweaks, as you know, aesthetical yeah. tweaks here and there. But it doesn't feel really that much different than Android 12 felt back in the day. It's more refined. It's it aged well, and it's it's getting better and smarter. And you know, insert all of the yeah, positive uh, you know uh, descriptions. Color OS and Oxygen OS have gone in a very different direction. They've gone slightly different than what we've seen in the last couple of years with Color OS and OnePlus. Uh, typically, what we've seen OnePlus is go more stockish, closer to Android stock. You know, very fast, very smooth. Not as much focus on animations and so on. Um, sure. Their merger or their collaboration with with uh, with Opal last year with Color OS 12 kind of kept that kind of that feeling going on. But I, we're noticing. I, I feel like the big change on that happened around the OnePlus 8, though, which is why I'm still so surprised by the number of OnePlus stands that are like, it, no, it should be near stock. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we started yeah, changing back then. Yeah, it really we, hasn't been yeah, yeah. for a while. It hasn't, and the people that are referring to it are probably on devices that are probably no longer supported. Like OnePlus 6s. <laughs> they just got off the support train a couple of years ago. Yeah. They don't know that anything has changed. Well, maybe that's then. what the, that, maybe that's the narrative. It's how, that's how it is. No, I mean, so what I meant to say, though, is it seems like color. So it looks like Oppo and OnePlus are going in a direction of a little bit more graphical representation. Uh, they yeah. refer to it as an aquamorphic experience. It's very fluid. It's very nice. It, the animations are not, um, sure. you know, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying that it's just, it's more animation that we've had before, but it's been done mm -hmm. tastefully. I'll say that. Um, I like it on the My Find X5 Pro. I, I love this conversation. It's like, oh, the colors on that photo are garish. Mm, <laughs> how gauche. <laughs> of this UI to be animating in such a, a rude and fastidious manner. Do tell. <laughs> no, no. I, it, it's, it's one of those things that I feel like um, some people are not going to necessarily appreciate it. I mean, to look at that and say, well, what's happening? Because there's some comments and some people talking about, it, obviously, you know, it, it's beta. It's yeah. not final. But I'm happy to see that it's coming out. Um, obviously, we get a chance to see some of the the new changes ahead of them being official. Uh, oh, this yeah. is Color OS in beta. No, the, so beta not final. The, the beta is looking really good. I mean, like yeah. I, I know I know we're talking about Color OS. It's making me anxious and a little excited to see what might filter down to Fun Touch. Yeah, yeah. I'm but that's very, what I'm saying. Very we're curious starting, to we're see. We're starting to see that. And I, and I think I saw somewhere Realme starting to push an update. So I'm, I would be tempted. I, I would be yes. uh, very intrigued to find out if yes. not. Vivo dropping a beta on the X80 Pro, at least some yeah. type of, you know what I mean? Like something to give you a taste of what Funtouch is going to look like uh, with the next iteration and we, maybe what new features they could be bringing into the experience. And and, and it's, I, I'm going to be curious because I, I mean, I think it's really going to lean into, uh, so there's one, un, I, I, I have to believe there's one code base. There's like yeah. one operating system and then depending on brand label and region mm -hmm. bbk is forking off just some of the aesthetic stuff and okay. that's actually kind of fun i mean like where a oneplus and an oppo differ slightly i think that's an interesting conversation and since you know i would say since the oneplus nine and yeah. getting updated in this way where oxygen really isn't oxygen anymore i've actually really enjoyed the improved camera performance and some of the UI tweaks. I yeah. flip in love and I it does not get enough attention, but the little UI tweak of upswipe that they got from Oppo. Mm -hmm. So you're on your home screen and you swipe up on your home screen from the, the from the side edge and you get this condensed cluster of all of the shortcuts on your screen to very quickly and very ergonomically like slide over and open an app or slide over and, and respond to something. And yeah. it's those little tweaks that I think you know, we take for granted when we just sort of familiarize ourselves with them. But bringing that to oxygen is genius. I love how that operates. I love how that functions. And now yeah. I want to see some more stuff like that on FunTouch. Oh, absolutely. But this year, actually, I felt like it went slightly the other way for Color OS. Well, they, the, they, yeah. They took okay, the shelf. Sorry, no, 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 yeah. They brought the yeah. shelf. No, no, no. They brought the shelf over to Color OS. Yep. And I was like, when I was looking at it, like, hey, buddy. How you doing? You know, what I, I mean? remember like, you. you. You look familiar. I typically this. No, I'm just kidding. 
No, I, I I like the shelf. Don't get me wrong. It's a it's a great feature. I just personally uh, I disable I put, it as soon as I yeah. Set it I I like it's, to it's swipe fine. down and get my notification. I personally like it. If I do want the shelf, I could turn it back on. It's easy. But the the point is, um the um the always on display for OnePlus that we saw there. Obviously, that came over there. We had mm -hmm. the canvas that came over. Uh, we saw Hasselblad come over with uh, the Find X5 Pro. We saw uh, you know we're seeing the shelf. We're seeing things go both on the other direction now. It's not just all. You know, oh, it's all cross pollinated. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It is, it's cross pollinated. So I think it's a benefit from both both ends. So not to make this obviously a, a whole episode about uh, Color OS or Oxygen OS, um, the, both are available in betas. I feel like, at least in my opinion right now, I feel like Color OS's beta is a little bit ahead of o Oxygen OS, mostly because there's a few more things not working necessarily on the beta, on the beta 2 that's out uh, for Oxygen OS. But again, if you're comfortable using betas, make sure you obviously back up your data. Jumping into it is not as easy as jumping out of it um actually specifically <laughs> for pixel devices because you cannot revert down to android 12 on Did a you pixel see all of the concerned people they were very concerned Are oh my concerned? god because it's a pixel I, story so we've got to be concerned very concerned i'm very concerned a lot of eyebrows were raised and you know pinkies were going up as they were drinking the no i don't know because all of the people out there, I mean, when I think of average consumers, I think of people who flash ROMs and are constantly trying to roll back their operating systems. Or, or side, loading, might be a side loading the update because their pixel didn't yeah. get the update. It, yeah, I mean, that's that's a thing else. that average consumers do. I mean, patient people that, like me, maybe. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm I, with I, you. I, <laughs> I, I, yeah. So long story. That was so that was the big drama. You guys missed out if you haven't been able to catch up on it. Yeah, you cannot revert. It's a uh, there is a built in um, I, the 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 system update to Android 13 does not support a revert, meaning you cannot use the same kernel, the same base to be able to go back. Sure. Uh, now, it's and, not and impossible. No, but on a but, typical but it, way, it definitely, yeah, it definitely just, vibes can't. with some of Google's recent changes for things that they claim are security issues. Absolutely. It does yeah, yeah. bug if you were into sort of flashing and and, uh, and, and, and flashing and ROMs, forth. not just yeah. running, streaking through places naked and being a creeper. That's not the kind of flashing I was trying to describe. Um, Again, one with your with your but, only fan, with your, with your only ones conversations. I, well, this is. I mean, if you're watching the stream on the East Coast, then I have to believe that the kids are in bed, and it's okay, okay if I make a terrible attempt at a blue dream. Uh, <laughs> um, no, yeah, but yeah. but what I what, what I was what I was uh, trying to point to though is. Um, it makes sense from a security standpoint. This kind of goes hand in hand with things like uh, locking down more of your storage and kernel access, locking yeah. down individual system components, scope oh, storage, yeah. which kind of broke all oh, my yeah. benchmarks. And, yeah, and, and this yep. is something, and this is something that we saw first more aggressively championed by BlackBerry. Mm -hmm. Blackberries were notorious. I mean, like this update comes out, you move forward. There is no such thing as rolling back a BlackBerry. The kernel, is, you know, is is like the most heavily fortified piece of smartphone software we've yet seen. And I still don't think any of those old Blackberries have been cracked yet. Like there was a bounty for for trying oh, to find some some exploit that they could use to to flash software on a BlackBerry, and I don't think it was ever claimed. So I, I now yeah, I just feel I, I like Google is adopting that. that policy and moving forward, Android Security. is going to be sort of a little bubble um, compartmentalized from all of the carrier mm -hmm. uh, customizations. But when the update comes out, you get the update and you move forward. I, I, I Again, it's one of those things that it, it I don't know, it, like it, it gets the shock or concern headline for a behavior that no one has ever questioned. There are so it, it, few it was, people it was, that it was presented in a way for it to sound like it was an issue where I don't think it's yeah like if nobody Google's ever met, taking this away from you. I was like, but you couldn't do it in the first place. It's not like if you got the Android 13 update and you're like, well, I don't like this. I'm going to call Google and tell them to take that back and give me back my old software. It does, it's not like it yeah. would have ever happened that way. So to me, it was like like much to do about nothing in a situation that I've like you know just move on to the, to, the, to the next 60 hertz conversation like i just felt like it was just not really very value added. i can't believe you just said 60 hertz to me and now i'm trying to think in 60 hertz and it's making me want to projectile vomit i, I can't I'm, believe you just said 60 I'm, hertz i am adjusting to the speed of 60 hertz <laughs> anyway 
Um, yeah. So yeah. apparently, it, all of the problems with the Pixel sucked all of things. the air out of yeah. the week of no. But I mean, like, I'm serious. But like, did you get that memo? I, I, everybody, everybody sent that. Everybody that put out a video that they, they had any concerns or any issues, they came back and put out another video. Saying and they, they, they all good. followed up their initial concerns. They all everybody, made every re reaction and response videos. They've yeah. done their due diligence. They've showed how they were testing the potential problems. And I guess everything's been fixed. I'm still getting BS comments on my videos like, oh, well, just because you didn't have any problems doesn't mean a whole bunch of people aren't having problems. And you're like, well, then show me. Show me anyone. I, 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 I mean, I did a, the Pixel 6a review for reviews.org. And in yep. my video, I was like, we're reviewing this phone and it's got Android 12. You're not, if, <laughs> if you bought it on launch, you're not going to be using Android 12 very long for, for right. more than a couple weeks. <laughs> and I was actually late in my prediction. Like they sent out Android 13 sooner than I was. I, yeah, I'm like, of all the time like, of, of them sending it out, I was like, Dude, seriously. So we were all like harping about, we're like, okay, when are we getting the security update? Sure. We got the update. We didn't get the August. We got June. Yeah, we, <laughs> we didn't get a security <laughs> patch. Hey, hey. We got a and, whole operating system update. And then Google so was again, like, uh, hold this my does, beer. This but, just yeah. keeps striking at the heart of what is so yeah. problematic about our tech reviews is that people sucked all the wind out of the most visible section of Pixel 6a uh, interest, interest yeah. to have these concerned oh no i'm using the phone pre-release and it's not been fully updated yet and the software isn't what consumers will use and you're like two weeks two weeks and now it's on android 13. all of those videos are are i mean like i i would i would use much stronger vile language here than i probably should for youtube but all of those videos are are completely irrelevant but they sucked all of the oh, focus yeah. Yep. And now, now that we actually have some reasonable commentary, some longer term follow throughs, the search traffic has died. And Google, you know, even though it's a Google phone, YouTube doesn't care about Google hardware division. YouTube only cares about outrage, trending topics, and time on site to keep you yep. miserable so you'll keep watching more YouTube. More and more. Like, that's it. So there's no, there's no fixing that. You know, it doesn't matter how many videos we, we make now saying like, yeah, the phone is brilliant. It's one of the best mid-rangers you can buy. It is one of the best performing phones on the market at any price tier. Mm -hmm. All of that, the people who are sort of interested in it and just regurgitate what larger YouTube channels are putting out there are leaving mass comments. Yeah, but someone else like had a problem. And so you're a shill. If you, you can't, if you're not going to talk about all the problems this phone has, then you're just a Google shill. And I, I, I can't mute. You're gone. <laughs> well, no. What I, what I really, okay. So look, I, I can understand that some people are concerned and they may have their a, a contradicting point of view. But what I also look at the conversation is, look, look at this. I totally understand that no such there is no such device on uh, in that exists that does not have a problem that doesn't have problems and maybe get better over time. The conversation and the lifespan or the experience on a device changes over time. That's that's been the the motto of any device. I mean, be it an iPhone, be it an Android, be it Samsung, whatever manufacturer you're talking yeah. about. And to come in, to come in and say, well, you didn't mention this, you mentioned that. Okay. Your the attention span of the average user, with the exception, obviously, like you know, long form. The twenty six minute is there's a there's a purpose for that device for that video. But what I meant to say is to cover everything that's out there about one specific device. It would create such a long video, such such a a massive uh, you know a, amount of work where you start looking at it when you're putting that video. By the time we get the devices, like you're saying, and the interest is kind of like on the bottom end. So the question mm -hmm. would be is, should we focus on what the device shines for? What the device can and what the device is able of, capable of doing now over when it first came out? Or do we just linger and sit in a situation that doesn't even apply anymore? You know, it doesn't record 4K60 for hours on end with the exception of a specific device that I happen to know of. But, you know, sure. you know you're not buying a $450 phone to record 4K60 for hours. Buy a cinema camera. Uh, you know, some of the concerns that they were talking about the fingerprint sensor, actually, I have not had that problem. It has mm -hmm. not been on mine. And I specifically spoke about Again, that. I'm still video. waiting for someone to show us their work. Yeah, show the work. Set That's up absolutely. your fingerprint. Yep. The phone is updated and it's out. And I'm not hearing mass panic from consumers that their phones are all completely unsecure. Or insecure, Whatever word yeah. that I think fits there. 
Um, but Michael Corcoran here, there were more videos about 60 hertz on the Pixel 6a than there were the Samsung throttling and Geekbench manipulation. Uh, bad, bad issues from Samsung. But again, if you criticize Samsung too harshly, then Samsung will blacklist you and they won't send you early access devices or any devices at all. And then your coverage will be even later on Samsung as... You know, the peak interest is sort of in that pre-release window just before people oh, really get their the Z, phones. The, the Flip 4, and yeah, the, the Z Flip 4 and the Fold 4. substantially less money. We're on the downward curve in by Monday. So this is how the, the plan, because like, a whole oh, yeah. bunch of people, I started seeing like, where right, are I'll the reviews, where Trends. are the reviews? You keep right? talking. On uh, Right around Monday, watch, mark my word, and, and I'm not saying this because I actually know this is truly a prediction on my side. By Monday, Tuesday, we're going to start seeing all the reviews on the Pixel 4, uh, on the Z Flip 4 and the Z Fold 4. And for the most part, most of them are going to be positive. Obviously, this is a, you know, the, the devices have been around for some time. There's, I'm not trying to put them down, but I'm just trying to say is that's going to be the peak. By Thursday, where most people that pre-ordered start getting their devices, that peak is still going to start going downwards. Anything beyond next weekend is going to be basically more on the lower end. That The peak performance on that is going to be, you know, it, it, it's going to be a much lower I mean, for people like us that buy devices, it's going to be a much lower lower ROI for us on, on investors. So yeah, should we Google have even Trends gone? is is estimating that our our sort of peak interest in Z Fold Four is likely going to hit around August twentieth. So yeah. line is like almost straight up going mm -hmm. from uh, the end of July to because the there's no week content. Of yeah, there's no content on it's, it right it's, now. And, and there's only like the very minimal, the few chosen by Samsung to deliver the Samsung messaging. That line is almost straight up. The line estimating for search interest is already peaking into next week. So mm -hmm. it goes from straight up to sort of angled out, which means the week following that it's, topic's yeah. dead. So essentially, so when yeah. real people are actually able to use it, and share their thoughts on it and 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 reviewers can do some of that longer term i used the phone for more than two days now i can give you an actual review um that's when interest in search is already tanking youtube is already shuffling those videos to the side they're not really promoting them and sharing them and putting them up in your own subscribers feeds and you're going to make way less money so unless you do the song and dance and kiss the ring at samsung samsung knows how to ratchet this Mm -hmm. Samsung doesn't spend $10 billion a year on marketing to go, oh, I hope people say nice things. Um, that, that's already a foregone conclusion by them. They're going to they're gonna ratchet the messaging exactly where they want it to be in that early interest. And then they know Google's follow through on this. YouTube will actively gatekeep videos after a trending topic starts to decline. Yeah. You're not on the pulse anymore. You missed out. So again, that, that was one of the main issues that we had when I first started at Pocket Now was not being on the good list for Samsung and having to come up with very creative strategies to talk about Samsung products in a, in a similarly timely fashion. And I spent two years working, working with Samsung PR to get back on the nice list, get off the naughty list. And it was pretty gross. It was, it was really, really pretty gross. And I can only imagine the conversation hasn't gotten that much different uh, now. But oh, if anything, it's it's even it's been weaponized even more because when I before I was at Pocket Now, I think you you got about a month, just sort of a general wave, a general trend. YouTube was a bit more flexible. I don't remember. I had far fewer subscribers, but I had a much easier time reaching the people that had subscribed to my channel. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and coming yeah. back from Pocket Now, that squeeze was evident where I had way more subscribers, but putting out a video, no one knew that I'd put out a video. And I still have like, man, I've smashed that bell icon. I had no idea you were still making stuff. Kinds of comments coming my way. So I know this is all complete BS. I had, from, I was talking YouTube to uh, a friend of ours and he actually told me uh, directly that he said, I was subscribed and I had the bell icon and I tried to look for your channel and you weren't in my feed. He was unsubscribed. So it must have been <laughs> some kind of algorithmic, whatever system thinking he is not actively wanting content on the, on, sure. on my side. But the, the, the reason why I'm mentioning this, it's, it's um, it just talks basically about some of the challenges that we have to go through. I have, 
I have actually money out of my pocket going in into a Fold 4. I'm waiting for mm -hmm. that device to ship out. I'm hoping that device does make it to me with no actual delays before I leave because I'm also leaving the week after. And um, I'm going to be very late into the conversation unless I do some some dramatic work while I'm flying, going to places. It's going to be very detrimental to the investment that I did into this device, and I didn't really. I, I think I think what you need to do is shoot, edit, and upload your Z Fold review they from the Z Fold on the airplane. On the airplane. Uh, oh to show God. the amaze balls power of the Z Fold, the A plus Gen One, and the Z Fold Four. Yeah, no, I know absolutely. I think that, actually, I think you that's know what, dude? That could it. be that could be that could be kind of fun. That Can like you? <laughs> Shoot, Shoot all of the content. edit, render, and upload an entire Z Fold video from the Z Fold while you're in the air. Uh, so you cannot upload. I, I don't know about how um, the. So I'll say this. Being that I tried while I was don't, on, going, don't, going back don't try, and forth to New York, don't try and weasel out of this. You're no, like, no, no, oh, no, I don't no, know. I really, can't upload. Oh, I think I can saying. do every single step that you mentioned, but the upload part. Um, the airline uh, airline uh, internet now is specifically targeting sp uh, type of con content on, on their uh, on their on their platform. I can't mm -hmm. open the uh, the YouTube uh, Studio app uh, to be able to do anything in there. And the YouTube app, as far as uploading, depending depending on the airline, you might be able to VPN around it. So I okay, maybe I could try that with with United on my next time because I'm flying United uh, the week after next. Um, but the, the the thing about it, I think that's not a bad idea. I think that's a really good, like shooting and rendering the whole thing out of it, shooting content, talking about it, and then so making you, you that You just need video. to bring another phone to shoot the B-roll of the Z Fold on your little airplane I, I, tray I don't table. Know. Do, you, do you think the X70 Pro Plus would be okay, though? Is is it powerful I enough? It doesn't have the A Plus Gen 1, and it sometimes, yeah. I'm going to say sometimes, you know, it only has one of the best camera sensors ever made paired with one of the fastest apertures on a smartphone camera lens. I don't know. Is it fast enough, though, dude? I, I need no, zero to 60 dude. in 2.4 seconds. It has to be that's faster than my Tesla. Not a phone if metric, but OK. Yeah, no, I know because that, <laughs> that's how crazy that was. That, that compares it. Obviously, the X70 Pro Plus would be the right thing to use. Um, actually, you know, that's not a bad idea. I think, you know, I'll, I'll, I will take that challenge and I will try to see if I can get something out within the first couple of days as a, not a, obviously not as a review. And I will not, I will specifically not. I mean, when I, I was flying yeah. way more, it, it, it was such a joy to mm -hmm. move to phone and folding Bluetooth keyboard. I do not understand people that are trying to like, cause you see, you, I mean, the it Microsoft makes sense, one, like, oops, sorry, the Microsoft one that we that's got. That's pretty good. It, it's obviously it's pretty not, as, not as compact as the one you have, which I really like, yeah. your folding one. But dude, this it's real plane, nice, it's super sleek, and it's super thin, like really. Well, and really and I, I mean, like I know I'm I'm Microsoft shilling here, but again, I I have my Microsoft little, <laughs> little keyboard ready to go. See, that's this what we did. Little I put ocean it back there. He picks it up from his side. Yeah, <laughs> just yanked it right <laughs> back over. You didn't see that. The though. choreography as on that actually yeah, worked yeah, yeah, really yeah. well. Totally great. Um, Thank you very much. No. The little ocean mouse is a great little travel mouse. I it's you teeny. Said, it, wait, you didn't it's pick up less... the ergonomic, right? You took. Oh, so you went. No, to the no, 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 no. I, I, I wanted the liberal gilt mouse. So this okay. is the one that's made out of recycled ocean plastic. Yeah, and yeah. it does have that kind of. It's not the best feeling in the world. It is that kind of creaky plastic. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like the sculpt um, has a really nice kind of feeling. <laughs> it feels really nice in the hand. <laughs> um, uh, this this has a cheaper feel to the plastic but that i like what i like is it it has similar contouring to the sculpt but it's smaller yeah it, so, absolutely I, I so was with you. It, I it's even it. smaller than than like the full width of of the keyboard yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 this is terrible audio podcasting for people that are going to try and listen back to this hey think, thank think you very much that... replay crew yeah, yeah, we absolutely. definitely love that you listen to our podcast. Uh, visually, um, but what this, was taken. I'm going to do the uh, this the, combo the in a bag yeah. is super good, and then you just pop up a phone and you can write. I, I, I understand it when people need to do something more robust. Like I, I was sitting next to someone the, the very last flight I took before the pandemic, and they had like spreadsheets and graphs and all this stuff going on on their laptop. Like that oh, person that needs a laptop. I totally get it. But I walk by someone and they just have like google docs up why why would you lug out a laptop it's hanging over the edges of these little tray tables 
write it on your phone. Write on your phone. You, it's almost exactly the same kind of experience. And your phone is so much easier. Like, oh, you need to get up and you need to move through the aisle? Cool, let me just pull up my phone. You're not sitting there like trying to handle a laptop and stuff. I don't get it. This no, is the kind of stuff like phones have completely eclipsed that kind of singular, um, minimal sort of interaction. I don't understand people that are still like, oh, better lug out my laptop. <laughs> Well, so that that will be the challenge. I think that I will take that challenge on, and will be that'll be my focus for next weekend's um, the the weekend. I guess that would be the weekend of getting the the, the Z Fold Four. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but one thing I, I wanted to kind of commentate on a little bit um, when we spoke last week, or I think initially when Samsung first announced that the announcement of the un unpacked and so on, there was a thing going on with the Z Flip Three, the Z Flip Four upgrade, and I think we talked about that last week, talking about the fact mm -hmm. that. You can get about 900 bucks for a Z Flip 3 and literally get you into a Z Flip 4 for about 100 bucks more. So Samsung sure. has 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 backtracked out of that conversation. There is a little bit of conversation around it. Now I don't I'll I'll say this. I don't think what they did was unreasonable. I think it's a totally reasonable thing. I think it may have been a mistake at the beginning or a purpose. What does that Samsung boot taste like, TK? Just <laughs> tripping no. over yourself to be like, no, 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 no. Whatever Samsung did was right. No, 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 no. What no, I meant fine. to say, what I'm trying to say is, is the, <laughs> what the correction that they did, although upset some people made sense in the aspect of the pricing that they the were The business offering. of, yeah, because yeah, I'm tired of Samsung uh, actually destroying the value the of their own products. Absolutely, because yeah. what they did no, I'm with saying, you. they said that, that a hundred that a four hundred and fifty dollar phone or maybe five hundred dollar phone, I'm talking about you know the one twenty eight version of the Flip Three was worth nine nine hundred dollars to trade in a year after it was released, and where everything anywhere you want to be able to buy that phone that's that's how much it sells for, and you're able to get nine hundred. So that already was a deal that couldn't be believed. But then they've kind of corrected it now to say that it's seven hundred for the Z Flip Three with the one twenty eight. 800 if it was the 226 256 and then 900 if you go with the bespoke edition version of that device um and <laughs> it was to me but like nobody's talking about that i mean other than max commenting on it on, on twitter and me he and i kind of going back and forth uh, it, it got a few little ripples though like oh my god i can't believe samsung's already changing their trade-in deals and you're like <laughs> samsung doesn't make money on these phones anymore no it, it absolutely we, we all, this is it, it's only the the sort of the diehard i don't even know who that person is anymore the person that needs to buy the phone launch week but pays full retail because they aren't doing like a carrier or a samsung trade-in or mm -hmm. I, I i don't i don't know who that person is like we should all be programmed by now to understand if you if you want to buy samsung you should never buy anywhere near MSRP. You either buy at launch with some kind of trade-in, or you wait, what, two months? And yeah. they're going to have some kind of ridiculous sale that oh, absolutely. grossly undercuts the value of their products. T Mobile's if giving you were in that window, for free, uh, the Flip 3 for, uh, Flip 4 for free if you add a line. And like, yes. Yeah, no, no. And, I, and that's supposed to be a $1,000 phone. Like, that's not a great look, and then it destroys the resale market. So, you, you know, like, look up Look up Flip 3s on Swappa, and I seriously doubt they're competitive against Samsung trade-ins. Not even close. That's, that's, that, that's what I, that was my whole point last week, was like, seriously, if you really want to make bank, this is the way to do it. Just buy a used a Z Flip 3 that's in good shape, trade it in towards a Z Flip 4, pay 100 bucks extra on top of that, and you just save yourself like 450 bucks. Like, but there was the, no the Samsung smartphone market, the Samsung smartphone division has been underperforming so poorly. Yeah, they can't keep those trade in deals running for long. No, we just got no. another story saying like Samsung is revising their shareholder expectations on yearly smartphone sales. And they I don't know who at Samsung thought it would be a good idea to, to put their estimates out around like 300 to 350 units sold. Now they're like, oh, no, uh, we'll probably sell more like like 260. Like that was a monstrous over overestimate over by your part, yeah. just to make your shareholders think that you were you were moving and shaking. There is no data suggesting that the sm Samsung smartphone division is doing better. Everything has been on a downward slope for especially their premium tier. Mm -hmm. Their A series still do fine. But their premium tier has been declining since, uh, well, I think peak was S10. 
everything from the S10 think, yeah, on the S, has been S10, a, a downward trajectory. Ever since the S10 Plus, it's been one feature after another being removed. And I think that that's where the kind of the rationale, although there was some improvement on the S20, I will say the S20 did kind of move up, but kind of no, a little no. bit down. I feel, you know. I feel the, the best phones they made were oh, from okay. S10 to Note 20 Ultra. What I'm saying in terms of sales, I, for their premium tier devices, I think S10 was the peak. And yeah. from in, in sales, and because this is really what Samsung Knights care about. They care that they are on the most popular team so that they can kind of bully because most people will have Samsung devices. But yeah. that really isn't true anymore, especially in the premium tier, where even in South Korea, we're seeing Apple making significant climbs at phones above $400. Internationally, we're seeing BBK labels combined outselling Samsung. Xiaomi, it, quarter to quarter, can sometimes outpace Samsung directly all by themselves. So oh, that's yeah. not true anymore. And we're seeing that kind of that, that kind of shift in messaging and, and, and posturing. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, it was like, well, yeah, but Samsungs are the best Androids because they're the most popular and they sell the most. And you're like, boy, howdy, is that not true anymore? No, and, and, and actually wow. Yeah, the, the sales numbers are declining rapidly. So unless you're trying to convince me that Samsung is the best because they sell the most A12s, I don't think you've got a solid argument there. And nothing I've seen from Samsung suggests that that trend is going to correct anytime soon. They're not it, making more interesting or more compelling products. They're, no, they're niching down. And that's fun for folding phone fans and for Note fans but they're not correcting for their bread and butter Galaxy S, the phone that goes toe to toe with the iPhone number, not the, not the iPhone Pro, that's not winning hearts and minds right now. And, and to, to, to kind of summarize again, the overinflation always also hurts because the reality of the matter is it forces you to kind of also feel like, oh, well, I always get the best deal if I stay with a Samsung. So they're trying to perpetuate yeah. the, the, uh, the conversation saying that you get the best deals at Samsung. You should stay with Samsung because Samsung is. And don't get me wrong. There are some good options available, but they're not selling. This is not the, like you said. Uh, a series that that, oh, that never gets a launch event that gets barely a, a YouTube video posted about it, and but well, that's and, that's where. And then we saw again, you can't out, you can't cut corners into getting people to buy more phones, and the A fifty two was a fantastic mid ranger. Dude, the A fifty three got taken off of T Mobile and AT and T site. I'm sorry. There it's are sad because I, mean, I have. What it. was it? Two months ago, we saw that report. There were 50 million A series phones sitting on shelves in warehouses that no one wanted to buy. They weren't going to retailers. They weren't going to carriers. And now Samsung has just cut expectations on their sales by around 50 million phones yeah no, i they're, feel they're, something is up that that's a pretty direct <laughs> correlating piece of data <laughs> there are 50 million of our phones that no one wants to buy maybe we should revise our expectations for shareholders and and at the same time it's all the bs because they can sit there and say things like oh but galaxy s sales are up and then you have to comb through their fine print to see year over year the the missing the note last year meant that there were about two million more sales of the note 22 because there wasn't a note 21 and the only phone that's really worth buying in the samsung s tier is the ultra like there's not a very it's, any very good reasons it, to buy the very, S22 or S22 plus. Yeah, oh absolutely. No, no, the, the base S22 I think is a very much a stepping stone. It it was designed and was purposely put together to make you feel like, oh, okay, I, I know I can feel I can I can I can afford a, a Galaxy. This is the latest and greatest. But then you start looking at the compromises that they did in there. It really kind of I, I feel like the S22 is the S20 uh, S22 FE uh, for some reason. Just the 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 experience and don't forget a month before that they released the uh, s21 fe like not even that long ago yeah. they, they launched the fe like the first week in, at, at ces while we were at ces so the the experiences and, and the approach i feel like this year has been very bored like they 
it just feels too many hand too many hands and, in the and, cookie jar and too many people driving in different directions. And again, um, they they launch an but, FE like after the Pixel Six. They oh had to God. delay their FE launch. Like yeah. they had, you remember they had the whole press conference. There's something else from Samsung. Oh wait, no, just kidding. Uh, it's bespoke. Uh, bespoke. <laughs> remember, we were watching. We, it. <laughs> we we were we were having that moment saying, really, there was that. That's what it. So we, that's that, that's what you needed a press conference for. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> that's what the press conference. No, that was that was a, that was a last minute scramble. But I mean, all all jokes aside and so on, it is very concerning the. What we are seeing right now is, at least for, from our point of view in the U.S., right now, Pixel is moving in the right direction. And regardless of what device, and I said this in my vision, we've said this many times, whatever device comes out to the market, expect some some type of growing pain, some type of things that will get better and it could get better. And if they're not, you're within your 30 days, you can return that phone. I always say this to people, yeah. make sure that the phone you're getting works and fits your expectations. If you first 20, 30, if it's not working for you for the first month, then return it. Don't hold it and complain about it. Just get the device that you feel like will work. But what I worry about is, what is this going to be like when next year when we get the S23 series, right? Does that mean even more? Just, okay, we're the best, so therefore we don't really need to do much. Slight improvement on camera, slight, you know, probably the exact same display panel, nothing else. They're not going to try to put out 144 hertz or 165. They, 120 is what everybody's going to stay. You know what? At, for, for, for an S23 or an S23+, plus. How about you just don't lie about your screen re refresh rate cycling lower? Yeah. Maybe that's the big upgrade is we actually do get the better power efficient screen that Samsung promised us and lied about on the S22 and S22 Plus. That change, would be the, nice. Uh, yeah, so, I, don't, so I don't like it. get a more power just... efficient SoC. I, yeah. I have to hope that whatever 8 Gen 2 Plus whatever Samsung HM2. gets because yeah. we know they're not going to do Exynos because we know they can't do that right. Um, let, let's hope that that we get a, a, a around a ten percent battery or thermal advantage with a new SoC, yep. and then we compare that with the screen we should have gotten on the S twenty two, and then hopefully we can have an S twenty three, which is a smaller form factor premium tier phone that has acceptable battery life because asus yep. is doing it we know oh it can be so I, I so i saw yeah so i saw jeff having the uh, asus zen phone 9 i was like so oh my god i'm gonna drive up to san francisco and go and shake him down for it it's it you looks like, like a really cute phone hey jeff look over there and then just grab the light you know like, <laughs> yeah like, he's like i'll, I'll dangle some earbuds in front of him and be yeah, like "Ooh, yeah. shiny you, yoink yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard about the new Odysseys? They're inside this box. Go in, check it out. No, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I hey, like, Jeff, is that a Fio BTR7 behind you? What? Yeah. <laughs> Yoink! Oh, oh, oh. oh, that is cruel. That is that'd cruel. be dirty. <laughs> that would be, be so dirty. dirty. Yeah, yeah there, there's a level of uh, trickery that I think would be okay. But you do that, and you'll never. I mean, Jeff will drive <laughs> no. down to LA. I'm sure that. Jeff knows a couple dudes that would uh, help him yeah, out like, in rectifying why? that situation. No, 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 I, no, no absolutely. <laughs> uh, but so, to, to kind of just kind of summarize, I don't want to obviously make it into uh, too much of a show on on this. The Z Flip and the Z Fold are going to have a conversation. Next week's conversations are going to be primarily colored by what you see early in the week. If you'd look, if you want to look like real actual usage and see what other people are actually, the users that are going to probably they're spending their hard-earned money and and other things, not to discount the reviews that are going to be coming out, but more so speaking about you know when you want to see the lived-in experience uh, from actual yeah. users. Yeah, show some love, you know, give them some clicks and, and then share some of that content just to kind of let the conversation go. So it is going to be a little bit of a harder. We, we, we talk about this kind of stuff a lot, and I feel yeah. it is very important. Like, I don't I don't believe you can really review a phone anymore without some of the media literacy going into how YouTube handles review content. Mm -hmm. I feel unfortunately now every video of mine has to have some kind of explanation to head off. Like, why isn't this just compared to a Samsung? And why didn't you just declare Samsung the winner? You must be biased. No. Um, now, unfortunately, because of those numb nuts, we, we can't have nice things. But the other thing that I think is going to be critical over the next year, um, I, there was a, there was a, it wasn't really a debate as much as it was just sort of a philosophical conversation on Easy's channel right before our stream, Tech Preacher mm -hmm. yeah. uh, podcast. 
and uh, he had uh, LB and he had Trent, um, uh, formerly a tech rant style channel, but Trent's channel is has always been very good at kind of confronting these issues. LB is very outspoken about some of the issues with creators and stuff. And I think we all too often frame this as a creator issue. This creator is purposely misrepresenting the pixel to satisfy Samsung fans just so he can make more money. And, and I, I phrase this too, but where I try to not single out an individual creator, what I'm trying to point to are the bad trends. Mm -hmm. The bad trends come from the platform. And this is the problem that we're going to face. There's a Google trend, trending topic, YouTube algorithm, SEO popularity trend that encourages the kind of behavior we, we don't like from people that kind of manipulate the results of their analysis to satisfy a particular mm -hmm. kind of audience to make more money. And on the one hand, it sucks. I still want to point that out because that is very bad for our community to have that trend in play by creators. But the trend comes from the platform. The platform is toxic to this conversation if we're looking for anything that will handle smaller uh, manufacturers in a more consistent and in a more fair way. So if we don't do our due diligence in sharing the content that we feel does mm -hmm. a better job of handling these topics, then increasingly we're just going to get outrage porn. Increasingly we're just going to get the bad hot takes and we're going to complain about it, but complaining about it just draws more attention to it and that makes those people even wealthier for having put out a lazy hot take video. So yeah. unless we're willing to put our effort towards sharing and promoting the content that we feel does a better job, then we're going to keep getting more of the same. Absolutely. No, no. I, and, and I, and I see some of the comments as well uh, with everybody kind of uh, covering that there. Oh, Hey, we have Oliver from Sweden. Good morning. Hey, <laughs> it's morning. <laughs> good, good. LG isn't good enough. Yeah, no, I know, but guys, LG isn't good enough. I get it. I get it, David. Um, one thing I did want to actually kind of cover that it's been something that Juan and I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. And it's, it's actually, I don't want to try to make it into a blue bubble, green bubble, but there's first a campaign that Google's trying to go with to try to bring more mm -hmm. awareness as to, you know, helping, ha helping Apple come see the light or come to the, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but there, <laughs> there's a push for RCS to try to make people more aware that, yeah, you know, uh, you know, RCS isn't broken. Get the it, message. It, get the, Come on, get the iPhone message. iPhone users. And um, and and for me, I feel like I wanted to participate in that conversation, but I haven't been able to use RCS for the last three weeks now. <laughs> um, oh and, no. And 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 we actually now, in, at least in my household, are no longer on RCS. We are between myself, my wife, and my and uh, my son. For some reason, we are having some RCS issues. Um cannot work will not send shows us active and active and connected but it tells us that the other person is not online an example would be i'm sending a message to juan and the on my side says sent and then if i tap the message it says waiting for juan to go online and i'm like but he's online i know we were talking not that long ago uh, then you have to send it via sms and if you don't do that i'm missing text messages he's not able to send me messages for me. I'm not able to get them and I'm not able to send them. So we end, now we're actually talking on Twitter of all things, but the conversation still needs to be done. The realist reality of the matter is, you know, making RCS or making Google messages understand reactions and emotes or reactions from, from Apple devices is one thing. And I appreciate that. But the conversation of, you know, making sure that RCS services run independent of carriers that's one thing, but also of company or devices like specifically with with Samsung devices. This is one thing that I've always drove me crazy with this is Samsung loves to make a duality in there, right? We have two calendar apps. We have two, cal uh, two not two calculator, but one calculator app, but two messaging apps, two stores, a uh, Google Play Store and the Samsung Store. So you can be able to download applications from both. But apps that are installed that are dualities, so they're system apps. I cannot uninstall messages. Even if I disable it through ADB, it doesn't it doesn't actually uninstall it, right? All it does is it just removes it from my app drawer and it makes it look like as if it's not there. And then if I try to install RC uh, messages again, it just revives that copy of the message, a uh, messages app. So long story short, and my little bit of a uh, issue that's going on for the last week, two, two to three weeks now is 
the service that I love, the service that I really appreciated having for Android, that I loved going from one device to the other, has been borked based on a conversation. I don't know if it's on Samsung's side now, if it's on Google's side, or not only actually Google. I think it's actually either Samsung or T-Mobile. One of the two services is for work and not working for me. But if I switch from a Samsung device, it kind of works for me on my Find X5 Pro. So I I'd almost have to say that I feel like it may be Samsung the way they're doing it with their devices, at least the carrier versions. I don't know about the unlock, and I'll never buy a, an, a, a carrier version of Samsung devices again. If I have to, I won't. It's it's not worth it. Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's a long. I, 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 no, no, no. I mean, it's definitely been something that's been kind of messing us up for the last couple of weeks. But uh, I, it's it, it's, yeah. it's also been interesting to me. You know, you you want to kind of say like it's the Samsung T-Mobile relationship in that they are making a proprietary version of this. I, that's what experience. I think it is. There's a there's yeah. a quite a bit of things going on from because the I, moment my, I turned my, on. Sorry. My personal SIM is on Mint, and I am using a completely different server infrastructure. Oh, yeah, you're you're not even on T-Mobile. You are. Server. Yeah. And T-Mobile has broken something on their network that I am not being affected by on Mint Mobile, even though I use T-Mobile towers. I, I, I do want to say that I feel like from the day we... So you remember back when we got the S22, right? When I was when when you borrowed the S22 from me, and I think you got the, the uh, Ultra from Barry, um, you needed to put a SIM card, an active SIM card into the T-Mobile device, the Samsung dev device from T-Mobile. Otherwise, the device will not boot up. You could not set it up. That was step one. That was a red flag for me because I'm like, why? I bought the phone. It's my phone. Why can't I boot it up? Step two, certain specific applications, background processes, and so on that, that are already built in there from Samsung, uh, from, from T-Mobile built into the Samsung. I think there are certain things that are being done, as you said, the customization of devices for carriers are going to a, some to a certain point that they may be borking other services and that's just okay for them. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, Google's only answer, sorry, not Google, uh, T-Mobile's only answer to me at the end of the day was like, why don't you just reset your phone? Back up your data and reset your phone and that should fix your problem. I'm like, Okay, yeah, I realized that that was always a solution. It's not, I mean, I'm not oblivious to this. It worked before, after, you know, but um, I just don't get the, the um, like, there's no recourse. Google doesn't service uh, RCS. It's not running on Google service. It's running on T-Mobile service. But T-Mobile doesn't know how to troubleshoot it. They're just telling me to reset the phone. You know what I mean? Like, there's too many hands in the conversation, and I don't know who to talk to, and nobody wants to, everybody's like, it's this. So, yeah, I'm waiting until the next, I, I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm contemplating just switching over to the Find X5 Pro uh, permanently. It's just, it's not, there's just too many issues that I've had with the S22 Ultra since I've had it. Not related to the camera. I want to be specific. It's more so about the user experience, connectivity, just issues that make it that I cannot depend on things. And I don't want to do that. I need a device that can work. And I need a device that just does the stuff that I need it to do. And it's just, it hasn't been working for me. And that's and that's when TK switched to an iPhone, and just threw away all this other all this other nonsense. Okay, I'm not that desperate, my friend. I have an iPhone. I have the 13 Pro Max sitting there. It's my day stuff. Uh, I don't. I, I just I can't see myself on an iPhone, man. I'm sorry. I well, can't. That's, that's a sh that's a shame. It's just sitting there. Um, Michael Pepper Tech is saying, I wish I didn't have to go into Chrome to get to my saved passwords. Have a Google synced version in the native settings, similar to how Apple's Keychain works. I thought one of the updates coming to google assistant was going to be like to some access sort of the better better access to access your uh, well, some sort of easier access for your passwords the and login google autofill service is supposed to be keying off of the account that you have logged into chrome or you can also customize it if you have multiple accounts you can actually go into the settings and select which account uh password right. management is being used but it's supposed to be the same one as what chrome uses so all you have to do is go into your device, look for autofill, find the, the find the Google service. Obviously, I'm assuming mm -hmm. it's selected, and pick the account that you want it to be. And as long as it matches what's inside of your Chrome, those same passwords will come through. You just need to be using Gboard. That's the only uh, the the close the loop oh, yeah. of the process. You have to use Gboard. I saw though that they were going to be making more of like because you remember like Firefox used to have a standalone password yeah. manager. Mm -hmm. There yeah, are yeah. obviously other. Um, third-party apps that are standalone password managers, but I could have sworn that Google was going to be doing, or maybe it was Chrome. Maybe it was Chrome OS. It's Chrome's, I don't Chrome. Know. Some, some, Chrome someone's going to have to look one. it up for me so yeah, yeah, no, can no, try uh, and help. Uh, uh, Google's been pushing out there. commercials on Chrome 
being a password manager. And they're ad they're advertising this obviously on an iPhone because for for and for iPhone users, they want to make sure that you're using, especially for sites. They're recommending basically so use our browser so that your passwords are saved. You don't have to remember. That was I think the stick part of the conversation, oh, uh, gotcha. the, the commercial. Uh, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is on Android devices it, that worked and it's been working for some time. But to use to get the benefit of that through your keyboard so that you get the recommendations correctly, you do need to have the autofill service selected correctly to be Google and not the native built in like Samsung devices by default use Samsung um, autofill, you need to change that manually. And then if you're yeah. using Gboard, the next time you go into a site, it automatically pops up in there, the autofill service comes up and that should be that should fix it for you. Yeah, I stuck uh, with Firefox. So I don't even know about all this stuff. Uh, Gabalette is also saying, though, that his Z Fold 3 is constantly falling back to SMS because of T-Mobile. So, yeah, I, I don't know how. To, and, and so just a reference, a this is not a and, and as obviously, as he says, uh, but it's not just a TK thing. There is actually a, a whole Twitter, uh, not Twitter, a Reddit, uh, a subreddit running on T-Mobile problems with the S22 Ultra. It, there are many users complaining S22 specifically with T-Mobile. And I have to say, I have to say that there has to be something to do with that variant of the S22 Ultras because it's a carrier version. It mm -hmm. was, it, it, it has to have something to do with what T-Mobile services are running in the background and what Samsung's running sure. and something is borking RCS. And it happened within the last update that they pushed out. This is the other kicker. The 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 whole thing started going for sticking basically was around the last OTA update that we got with August first security patch update. Well, yeah, because yeah. if you know, Samsung it, didn't break anything, then they wouldn't have anything to fix for their next update that they do the best software and yeah, uh, always get the best yeah. updates. Always now there are right. never any problems with Samsung phones, but they always have the best updates to the problems that they don't have. It it is at, no absolutely I'm with you and that's how it typically is it always gets better over time and nothing ever but... oh Frank nailed it this is your problem right here Samsung RCS must be running at sixty hertz there's that's your fine. problem you know I didn't but I, I would just like to take a second Please. to yeah. uh, to re to, to to remind people I love that Google's kind of playing cutesy with this spat with. Apple with Apple, but yeah, I yeah. really love to see someone make the just the in courtroom documents disclosed during the Apple versus Epic lawsuit that uh, Craig Federici uh, Federighi is it Federighi or Federighi, Federighi. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Federighi. okay uh, Craig Federighi Apple senior vice president president of software engineering and the executive in charge of iOS feared that quote iMessage on Android would simply serve to remove an obstacle to iPhone families giving their kids Android phones. And then Phil Schiller, the executive in charge of the Apple App Store, who doesn't know whether or not the App Store makes money, he testified under oath that he just has no idea if Apple makes money on the App Store. Uh, when an employee commented that the when an employee commented about moving iMessage to Android, quote, the number one most difficult reason to leave the Apple universe is iMessage. iMessage amounts to serious lock-in, end quote. So uh, Phil Schiller also went on to say, quote, moving iMessage to Android will hurt us more than help us. This email illustrates why. So no, I, it's never been about making the best possible product. It's never been about empowering the best kind of communication. It's always been about breaking stuff that might talk to a Apple gear and then making it look like it's the other party's fault. Oh, no, you can't file transfer from an Android to a Mac. Man, wouldn't it be great if Androids could just work? But it's the Mac that doesn't support USB MTP protocols. Yeah. So they no, broke USB so that wouldn't work. But I, I can always just transfer files on my iPhone. I can't send an iPhone user a file over Bluetooth. Why can't you just airdrop and it just works? That wasn't that wasn't my Android's problem. Yeah, Bluetooth yeah. works great for sending files and things. It's your iPhone that's broken and I can't send it to the iPhone. So really what we need to do is come up with like an anti it just works campaign. Why can't the iPhone just work? 
for these standards that Apple is trying to break. And I think if you could put a couple hundred million dollars behind that Google, you could then start changing the perception of your your competitor's product. But just asking them to fix RCS is just making iPhones look like they're the superior choice. This yeah. entire branding campaign by, by Google is basically just encouraging the one, one upsmanship and the iPhone fans to keep acting like they've got the secure the the superior product, which is hilarious. No, and, and so I think, but it's it's like one of those weird. It, um, I, I, it's like you you almost never you know for people that are, are that do face the the, the issue of having to, to transfer content or so on or even communicate with i with iOS devices, you start seeing these. Um, and and you you're like well, what do I do? I'm, I'm stuck with where I am. I've already bought my device, kind of a thing. And you know, then you throw your hands in the air. You don't really know, but you need to make more awareness. It is literally more about the awareness of letting people know that it's not literally the Android side's fault. We have so many more options that are available that are same similar protocols that they use on i on well on iPhones and so on, but they are purposely not meant or allowed to work in that same manner so that it is that walled garden experience and air dropping only yeah. works because it's the best thing ever but yeah don't get me wrong we have very similar services i can transfer files from one android to another with a blink of an eye with wi-fi with the nearby share i can transfer that to multiple people at the same time where you can't do and, that and i'm not even expecting you know like iphones to support a proprietary google solution to the same problem but my xiaomi does not have nearby share. It does not support that. It, 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 it's, it's a part of the Chinese ROM where um, I don't have all of that. The, the, and so I, I know yeah, I can. Yeah, you're missing that. I, I, I know I, I can that. flash a few things to maybe my get that working. doesn't have that either. Yeah, I know. But I, I can still tell my 12S Bluetooth a file yeah. over to my Pixel and I can share from the Pixel whenever I want to share a photo from the 12S Ultra, and I literally cannot do that on the world's most powerful phone. I do want to show this off real quick. I, um, sure. Oh, I don't have it booted up. And I don't know where the phone went. So I might need to take an extra second with this. It was a really happy discovery mm -hmm. on Vivo's. Um, oh, hold on. I, I don't know if this will work. And now it's it booting. Is it only on the latest uh, Vivo, or is it something on the X70 also? I, I don't know if this will be on the X70. I just discovered this by accident. So let me just kind of pull up a photo, and I want to give it a shot. Okay. And this is terrible podcasting. I do apologize. Absolutely. For for our for our listeners, this is, the this audio is listeners. kind of the worst. Uh, Juan is sitting in a chair. If, and I, he's looking if down I were consuming this podcast, I would be critically disappointed in the level of unprofessionalism here. Like, I need I pictures. Need to see. I need a graphical representation of what the guy's doing. No. Oh, my my Vivo has a has an update. Um, nope, 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 nope. Okay, so hold on. Let me let me just get a picture up so hopefully you guys can see this on camera. But if if I I've got my X80 Pro mm -hmm. and I've got my uh, IQ Nine 18. Pro. Oh, the Nine Pro. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Not the, the Nine 19T. Pro. My Nine T is is over on the side. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tap the X80 Pro to the back. What? And it does tap to beam. They brought. They still have tap to beam on this thing. And now it's sending. Vivo oh. resurrected tap to beam dude okay and i want remember, this back so bad do you remember the bump application back in the day the one you used to yeah have it was to great this? yeah yeah, i know that is, i, I is, i'm so sad because like yeah nearby share is good i yeah. used tap to share so much yeah. And, and it was great because, like, I didn't have to set up anything fancy. I, I didn't yeah. have to walk my my family or friends through setting up something like nearby share. I, I would just get their phone, and as long as they had NFC turned on, boop, share it, initiate the file transfer. This is still the best. Yeah. It's still way better than nearby share. I, I, didn't think I, I know that. nearby share works, and I get why the protocol is set up the way that it is. But when I, I, I just randomly had three phones sitting on a stack and two of them were on and yeah, I went exactly. to open a photo on my X80 Pro and then it went, this NFC tag doesn't work. And I went, that's weird. And so then I shifted the phone over and it shifted on top of the iQ 9T mm -hmm. and then it did the zoom. I went, whoa, 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 
It says touch to beam. It can beam the file. <laughs> they brought it back. Convenient. And I just weapon. want that. I want I want it. I want it so bad. It, I want it, it so you could you could like oh, I've got this funny web page open. Let me beam it to you. Absolutely. You could just tap just someone's tap phone. Back, opens up on the other Here's side. Here's my yep. contact information. Let me just tap your phone. Tap and beam was the best. And I it's I'm so sad that it's gone. It's just I so know. lame. I, I, that's why I was kind of like when, when I saw that I was like, "What? What version of Android are you running, my friend?" No. Uh sorry. <laughs> so so and anyone out there again as if I needed more reasons to be an even bigger BBK shell. Um, if you have some Vivos lying around, give them a couple taps because uh, apparently you and your Vivo I, buddies can still be. I, I, I will back say, I will say this. There's a very, very small number of people that can, that can easily flex the number of Vivos, my friend, you know, the ones that you have at least, uh, with I should see if it works on the Neo six. I, let me see if my Neo six is charged. I'm going to see if, if the, the Vivo mid ranger can also tap and fair. But, Dude, but we're going to keep the show going. I, I'm not going to make this like a stop and wait for one. No, 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 definitely not. Thing. I, I, uh, I want to say, well, I hope you're doing well, Adam. Adam is in the chat as well with us. Um, oh, Tech Odyssey, Tech Odyssey, Adam. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, hey, and, what's up, uh, Adam? Everybody, definitely. While Juan's fumbling around to try to find devices, in, I almost in just a, threw a, the phone a, on the ground. Let's let's a, see if it's even charged. I don't even know if it's charged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, I think the the benefit overall, I think what we're saying here is that, you know, communication and, and content creation and content sharing needs to be a universal method. And we need to have universal methods that work, that just work across platforms. There's no reason that iOS and Android cannot be, and, and, I, and I'm saying that there, with no, no, friends. No. As There's a, no reason why Apple shouldn't be supporting a modern communication standard, standard. Exactly. which is now backed up by carriers. They can set up their own servers they, they, to they can They can their... keep iMessage. That's what I'm trying to say is they could keep iMessage, but support RCS and allow people RCS to RCS should be the fallback, yeah, not, not SMS. SMS. Yeah. And we would move all of this forward, and that would be better for everybody. But Apple doesn't want better for everybody. Apple wants broken for everybody else yeah. to make iPhone owners feel like they're they've got the superior product. because it only works on iphone yeah no no i'm, I'm with you and, and i think there's um if i'm not mistaken september 7th has been marked as the day for the iphone 14 release timeline if i'm not mistaken it'll, it'll be I'm more expensive there. and i still won't care no i don't i'm just it's it's fun <laughs> it's fun to see how so they timed it specifically be, to be outside of the window of ifa so that they get their own week but yeah like you know seriously uh, and then before you know it will be iphone conversations and everything else doesn't matter uh, but you know, it, it is, it is, uh, tech for your needs. Hope you're doing well, man. Um, so as, as Juan's booting up the, the, uh, the device, um, for me, this week has been pretty busy. I mean, the, the color OS videos that I dropped both English and Arabic, I've been, uh, I've been testing out the software for the last week and a half. I've gone through, you know, gone through back and forth with, with Oppo on, on software, uh, optimizations. And then of course, uh, getting it to where it is. And I feel like it's a move in the right direction, getting OEMs to start releasing betas and letting people test them out, give some feedback. It's always a better approach. Um, features like tap to beam is something that I see now you got me. Now I want to try tap to beam on my side. <laughs> I mean, no, seriously. So look, I mean, I have the find X five pro. There's a reason I want to try this. Um, and oh, let's see. Can you go from like a vivo to an Oppo? Ooh, this should be, I, I don't see a reason why not. So here, here's my one. Where's my one plus 10. <laughs> we're we're going to tap and tap and beam all the phones. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Do I have NFC? Do I have NFC on? That's a better question on the other one. Hold on, NFC. Da, da, da. Sorry, I know I, I kind of walked away. <laughs> this is the dumbest show we've ever done. And we're reaching I'm we're, here for it. <laughs> we are reaching a new a new level. So why can I not find NFC? NFC friend, dude, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, I'm like I'm I'm like oh, blurred, man. no NFC here. NFC, NFC, and no, NFC is on here. But I think I have my NFC off turned on on my ten pro. So apparently the uh, the IQ Neo Six, I don't think it has NFC. I, okay. I maybe potentially missed that in my review and i should have been paying no no tap oh i'm hearing something yeah oh wait no no that's that it went i was like the thing is i don't know where my nfc tags are on the other on each side 
No, no luck. Okay, no bueno. No bueno. Okay, but you know, the day is not over. <laughs> the day is young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Let's let's get this thing going. Anyways, um join us join us join us for the uh you know uh, game for the at, at home version of this game if you can android beam on any of the any of your latest uh devices on the market and of course i forgot to charge my x74 plus yeah it's just okay so i can't test that <laughs> one on my side I took it off the charge and then I, I forgot to put it back on it's just when you have too many phones you need to kind of plug them back in welcome back at beambox yeah no i know um yeah on. i don't i don't think it's, it's, no, it doesn't know I, what to do so with it. it I, this might just be like a resurrected feature from from Vivo. Yeah, all I get is NFC tag here. I'm not getting. I'm not getting the yeah. beam functionality. Okay, at Lame. least Samsung definitely doesn't have it. And well, well this is another reason why we need more unified code base. Yeah. On no, no, I know, phones, I know. and I need to, that feature back on a OnePlus. <laughs> I could. I you. You could make a commercial out of that. It would be great. Like, hey, how you doing? Did you see that? Did you see that picture I just posted? Which one? <laughs> yes, that one. Tech, tech Odyssey. Te te vigorous tapping increases more vigorously. Uh, vigorous tapping intensifies. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, you, I, I hope someone can GIF that for me. That would be <laughs> delightful. So, uh, the the other part of of this this week for me was definitely spending some time with this big old box here. It's it's about thirty pounds, so I'm only going to hold it up a couple times. Okay. But uh, this is this is the Lie Power, and uh, it 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 does the electricity. It does. So it if does you the need power. if you need electricity, it does the electricity, and I really like these these new battery generators. I, I, no, no, absolutely, yeah, no, no. Those, those little because you had the anchor, right? I got the, so that was what I was about to say that the looks so I've I have a couple the anchor was the last one we worked on it and then I had one before um it, the one I had I forgot the name I think it was I don't think it's like Raft Power but it's one of the older another brand but it's it's seriously it's like four years old four to five maybe years old and it still works I charge it every once in a while just to keep it fully charged mm -hmm. it still powers my refrigerator like it's strong enough to power I mean it's a power efficient yeah. refrigerator but it's for those emergencies and for those cases where you need to have that much you know to keep things kind of going um i appreciate that functionality and i really like the fact that it, they do exist and they're definitely a must-have for any kind of situation like you were saying in your video uh you know los angeles california is is due for a storm we don't know how the how the, the weather and how things are going to be realistically at some point and you need to have some kind of options and and uh there these are really good selections and do good options there um uh, by the power of by anger. the power of anger, uh, power. I have the power. Well, but this uh, one's a lie power, so I have the lie power. So it's a liger, um, but with power. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 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 not a tie-on. It's uh, definitely a liger. Um, so yes, this is the Mars One Thousand Pro. It's yeah. an eleven hundred watt hour battery with up to. 1200 watt total output 2000 Wait, watt surge. That's, a, that's a bigger capacity than uh, the anchor no yeah i mean Literally? it's kind of in the same ballpark i mean if we're talking yeah, it's, like it's general, 100 yeah, 10, watt hour and oh, and okay. again the watt hour capacity measurements i mean you start talking about the difference between watt hour and milliamp hour yeah, yeah. and it's it's it, it, it's it's more about using electricity under load based on a chemical battery cell so if you're within 10%, you're kind of in the same tier. Okay. Um, but yeah. I'm with you. Uh, pure sine wave, uh, multiple AC ports. It does not have, the anchor has two things on this. Mm -hmm. The anchor has a 100 watt USB power delivery uh, USB C. Oh, that's plug. right. Yeah, this yeah, only yeah. has a 60 watt. And then the anchor does have, um, it, it's, it's sort of an uninterrupted power switch. So you that, can kind of use the anchor as super, a UPS. It, yeah, it's a, it's a super fast one. It's not exactly a UPS, but you can exactly, kind of yeah. use it like a UPS. This does not have that. So you do have power pass-through where you can use the Lie Power while you're charging the box itself, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have that different mode option that the if anchor power, has. Yeah, but still, so if the power shuts down, you lose power, but you just have to turn on the Lie Power. Yeah, the Lie Power is all manual. Point. Everything yeah, yeah. is push button manual um, on all of the major uh, power connectors, but oh, I got it. 30 pounds, 
big battery capacity, active fans for cooling. Um, the fans are a lot louder than the anchor, but you kind of don't want your batteries to be running too toasty. No, no, no. And just sure. really rugged frame. I mean, just solidly built. So I've been playing with this for, for a little bit more than a week now. My video went live today. This morning, yeah. And yeah. I'm just flipping loving these like portable power stations. I mean, I, we've we've been we we were talking uh, when we first moved into this place. We know we're in an area that's kind of a little prone to brownout. Southern California's electrical grid is kind of crazy. Yeah, we, we had did a not want to have to do a gas generator, and these big battery packs are so. I mean, they're they're definitely much more expensive than a mm -hmm. similarly rated gas power generator. But they're so much easier to use. Oh, absolutely! And and when you can go with a little bit of solar, like I've got these ridiculous solar panels over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I, I I want to see this. Hold on, I'm gonna put you on full screen. And Ugh. sorry, not me, you. And ah. so this is. I don't, this I, is I don't think I can really get this going wide enough. But this is this is my Dokio. Um, this is a four panel. Technically, this this rates at like 300 watts, but it's a it's an it's a flexible solar panel, so you can't ever perfectly align Line, yeah. the solar cells to collect optimal sun. So I've never gotten better than 150 watts of power output from these, mm -hmm. but they were less expensive than a rigid 100 watt solar, solar panel. panel. Yeah. So I'm not really touching the rated efficiency of these panels, but I'm doing better than a more expensive rigid panel. But yeah, it's, it's a it's a four four panel fold up cell. And does it have here. a like a uh, does it come with a converter or an inverter or something like that? To oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. I mean, you can you can you can you can hook it up to a twelve volt. It even has the the alligator clips for that. Um, it's got the I remember there's the Anderson cables, so you can mm -hmm. plug into these larger battery power packs and like a whole series of different plug adapters. So you can even use this to just go direct to USB. Like this is silly overkill, but if you need to throw a hundred watts of power into your smartphone, you can just kind of plug, plug it in, in. and yeah, kind of yeah. kind of go with it. So again, I got these because they were inexpensive. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them unless you knew that you had similar uh, requirements that I had. But I, I've been playing with that and then trying to pair it up with all of these these big old power stations. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> so I'm all winded because I was carrying a big old heavy box around my office. I, well, you were flexing. I gotta catch that's my breath. The, that's now. exactly what you were doing. You were flexing Urgh. on the panels as well as flexing on the muscles uh, as we <laughs> <laughs> on this Thursday night. Um, so, what about this week? I mean, what's going on with you for the rest of the week? Or will there be other content kind of being uh, you know produced, pushed out? No. Um, I, I had a pro I had actually three videos all fall apart this week. Oh. So I'm gonna try and resurrect them. Mm -hmm. um but i i don't know what's actually going to get put out um i'm seriously toying with just like maybe i need to do a movie review or something completely off brand for my channel just mm -hmm. like get some of the creative juices flowing maybe i need to make like a weird video diary about like a classic game console or something i don't know you should do a movie um, review on uh, the dragon ball movie that came out it's coming out tomorrow it comes it comes out technically tonight but you could also catch it tomorrow i mean i'm gonna watch it i mean obviously yeah. that's that's obvious um the movie that i've got this like i'm already too late for all of the hot takes and the, the peak interest on it but i've maybe watched prey three times since it came out on hulu really and it's Was that really good, good. Oh, I okay, really I gotta jump like on it. That. I haven't I haven't had the time to to watch it. I've seen it. It's been on my feed on on my Google uh, on my Google Home. But... I feel anyone who's like complaining about wokeness or the main character being a Mary Sue or I, I mean like I feel a lot of people have really bad faith takes on what this movie is all about, mm -hmm. and I really like how they handle the predator storyline in this it's real simple and you're not in for a bloated you know expanding the universe kind of mess it kind of takes you back to basics and, and yep. it even abbreviates what the first movie was all about That's you're cool. in for 90 minutes of sci-fi action and hunting and killing Mm -hmm. And it's just as it's gory enough to kind of ride you through 
that 90 minutes. And this is mm -hmm. the best representation I think we've seen of the Predator since the original. Okay. Uh, the Predator is like one of my all time favorite movie monsters. The original. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, like I said, I, I thought about it. I've been, I've been kind of like going back and forth. And I don't know, for some reason, I never caught on to uh, Better Call Saul. And I decided to watch the first three episodes of that. This oh, week. yeah. So, you know what? I'm like, I don't know why I never I should have just jumped into that the moment it started because the, the Dude, series kind of ended. I, so the con Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but the conclusion I, of Better Call Saul is is very be better, better or worse than than uh, than than the original than series. Breaking Bad. Yeah, like completely different. No, Ooh. I love it. So oh, okay, so okay, okay. Breaking Bad kind of goes out with a bang. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, better Better Call Saul is quiet and introspective and thoughtful and kind of yeah. sweet. Okay. And it is, it is a different character. Yeah. Jimmy is a very different character than Walt. And mm -hmm. even it, it kind of like, it kind of fits the pacing and tone of the, the coda that we got in El Camino. Okay. So I feel your time spent watching better call Saul is very well rewarded. And it's the same incredible, careful, thoughtful attention to detail that we got in Breaking Bad. There really isn't any fat in this show. Oh, I, yeah, and it's yeah. got an even more difficult challenge of bookending. So there are parts of Jimmy's story that are a prequel. And there are parts of Jimmy's story that take place after Breaking Bad. Yeah. And I feel the show beautifully moves you through both of those so you've mm -hmm. got bookends it's almost like you've got the prequel you can watch parts of better call saul into watch breaking really bad. bad yeah and then you could you when you finish breaking bad then you can kind of finish better call saul and you could do an in-show chronological watch and then cap the whole thing with el camino yeah. and I, I i don't know anyone i i cannot think of any shows that have been so carefully planned that have sort of finished and reached their conclusions nearly as well as as these two shows and the movie uh, and of course, that, Je that Jesse got. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I it, To me, it, so this is why I was like, I, I saw Prey and I kept looking at it, but then after, after our conversations last week when we were talking about the last episode coming out and a lot of people were excited, um, I said, you know what? Let me see what what all of this is about. I mean, I liked Saul the the uh, the character, the personality that he plays, the lawyer, uh, you know, the 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 crooked lawyer, the the you know everything kind of you know the the money money laundering and a whole bunch of stuff the way we had him in Breaking Bad. But to see him how on how he progressively you know how desperate the the situation got, how dire, um, the scamming, the the you yeah. know introducing them, you know also seeing some characters being introduced from Baking Bad in here, like you said in that oh, prequel yeah. stage before they have met you know uh, and, Heisenberg. And, and it and solves. Uh, I I feel I feel the showrunners have done a very good job of handling the the tragic missteps that most other prequels have. Yeah, we know. Saul Goodman is yep. in Breaking Bad. Absolutely. So the drama of Better Call Saul as the prequel parts of the show obviously do not surround whether or not he might get killed by like a drug runner or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, we, we that is not that that is not the drama. That is not what makes you anxious. It's about how he moves through that journey to go from Jimmy to Saul. Uh, yeah. That's the completion of the story. That's where we don't know how did he get to this point. And, and it handles it so much more deftly than any other prequel yeah. that I've ever seen. Because prequels either exist to spoil the original or to tell a part of a story that has no consequence over the original. Oh, man. And here okay, so we've got I, something I, I, that, that wonderfully okay, okay. informs uh -huh. extra information in the Breaking Bad universe. Yeah, yeah. And you care about the character. I mean, Bob Odenkirk is just amazing in this show anyway. Oh, absolutely. But mm -hmm. it informs the rest of the landscape that then better prepares you for what all the relationships actually play out in Breaking Bad. Yeah. It's it's really brilliant storytelling. I, again, I can't think of any other... I can't think of any other self-contained, purpose-written... They knew they were going to get this number of seasons. They had this story to tell. They stuck to their guns. They didn't try and pad it out for extra because they could have made all the money and given oh, yeah. us ten seasons, and it could have ended up like Dexter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the restraint is beautiful too because the show goes out at like 
the peak of all of these performers delivering their best representations of these characters. Yeah, I, I can't say enough nice things about it, and especially from having briefly met Bob Odenkirk um, oh. before he was kind of blowing up as mm -hmm. as the the sort of action movie star that he also is now. Um, I can't be happier for someone who is who is definitely uh, an incredible performer, an incredible ensemble performer, and and has reached a point in his career where I think the rest of the world is getting to see his talent on display. So. I'm with you. I and and I will obviously keep you posted. Up. As you can imagine, I'm, I mean, I'm, I barely started first, basically, literally the first three episodes, and and I'm actually kind of like moving into it. Um, I do want to ask the question though, because now now that we're talking prequels and stories and conversations, mm -hmm. House of Dragons. So, oh, I, I have no attachment to okay. So yeah, got... Thrones universe. See, to me, I really totally... tried on season one, and 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 for season one of Game and Thro Game of Thrones. It, of course, of course, we were seeing some of the most brilliant TV and production in oh, the history yeah, yeah, of television, yeah. but, but it, was, I, it wasn't my cup of tea. Le and so I'm, I'm not even trying to say like, oh, well, you know, I was so over dragons and magic and stuff. No, oh, it wasn't really? anything like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was just not up my alley. And then I kind of felt like, oh, considering the backlash to how the whole series wrapped. Oh, um, we're, yeah. They were like literally right and left. The leads were dropping like flies. It was... It was a crazy well, beginning. But then also, it, was like, it was like a shock and awe for the most part. In, in, in much the same way that I just sort of like waxed poetic about Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, mm -hmm. how you end a show is very difficult. That is incredibly hard to stick the landing. And it doesn't seem, it, well, it seems like Game of Thrones not only missed the landing, but did so in a way that sort of nuked a huge chunk of their fan base. Like, Breaking Bad is a show I'm even happier to revisit now mm -hmm. that Better Call Saul has finished. Yeah, yeah. It made me want to rewatch Breaking Bad, whereas the end of Game of Thrones has not inspired any of the rewatchability from yeah, the Yeah, I haven't had fans. the. I, I never felt like I needed to rewatch it. The concern that I'm having right now is obviously the, the storyline and the narrative. It's because the, the House of Dragon is, is basically it is a prequel. It's how the, um, you know, Daenerys Targaryen kind of became, or the 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 the, the House Targaryen, uh, the, the whole preset, uh, everything that we saw in, uh, you know, in in uh, in the original series that we watched. So to me, it's it's a weird way of watching and knowing how it ends. Knowing that at the end of the day, although we get a better story, and I hope they do do to have a better storytelling, yeah. and we'll have more dragons because this is during the time <laughs> of the dragons. Sure. As a, no, but because you know, seriously, like with uh, with the with the original series, we how long did it take for us to see a dragon? Well, I mean, dragons aren't a big deal. I mean, you can pretty much shoot them out of the sky from boats with yeah, like with wooden one, harpoons one, and with stuff. One so harpoon. I don't see why people are so excited about dragons. It it was like they they seem really easy to kill. Yeah, no, but I, I just wanted to kind of get you a little bit of a hot take on that one because <laughs> I feel like that's one other thing. And then, of course, um, not to make it too much entertainment, but She-Hulk also premiered today on, uh, on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah, okay. that's right. So I'm really there, anxious about a lot that. Of things. Yeah. I know um, the, the, what's the lead's name? Tatiana Mas Maslani? Yeah, she name? she played, um, I forgot what was the name of the, uh, was it, it's not Alias, it's... Um, she had a really good show on FX. I forget the name of it. Yeah, uh, it was the, incredible, the and now I've forgotten what it's the called. The multiple personalities, the different, uh, they're basically all clones she of each is other. She's an, an amazing incredible actress. performer. She's Absolutely. amazing. And now I can't remember the name of that show, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I'm very nervous for She-Hulk. The cast is phenomenal. Yeah, I'm worried because of all of the, the Orphan fallout Black. from yes. Oh, absolutely. Thank Orphan you. Black. Thank you. Orphan Black. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank oh you. Oh my. You know what? Instead of watching She-Hulk, I might just rewatch the entire run of Orphan Black. Orphan Black. Because she's amazing. Killed me. Oh my god. Yes. Her performance in that is phenomenal. Oh my and the God, fact God. that she didn't get like multiple Emmy awards out of that is I don't a travesty. Know. I do not understand. Yeah, no, no. It, but um, yeah. I, I might just rewatch Orphan Black instead of She Hulk because it's more I'm I'm concerned about things like production design and special effects where I feel Disney has really been letting down the vast it, quantity of stuff that they're trying to pump out and they're not empowering their producers and their and their artists mm -hmm. to really make the best content that they can. It's been a very different. You're starting to notice a whole bunch of different conversations going on. But yeah, I mean, there was a lot, there was some backlash about the show initially with the CGI that they were doing for She-Hulk. When you know, when She-Hulk's up, 
And um, so I'm, I'm a little bit anxious. I, I saw it on the home screen. <laughs> I was like, I didn't mm -hmm. want to touch it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I've been so busy this week. Literally, the three episodes of Better Call Saul were the only three things I was able to watch. <laughs> Nothing else well, ever. You're, you're, you're going to put everything else on pause, though, because I need you to see Prey. Because we do need okay. to talk about Prey. And we without spoiling Prey. anything, okay. I, I have to say... I feel this is one of the best representations of native people mm -hmm. on 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 a major sort of again, it kills me that this film didn't get a theatrical release. It really deserves to be seen on the big screen on the big screen. yeah, um, it's simple. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's 90 minutes. Most of that is killing because it's a predator <laughs> film. Absolutely. but, I, I'm very upset by some of the people's commentary that like, oh, well, Native American people from the 1700s wouldn't be able to understand any of this. And you're like, people weren't dumber 300 years ago. This, this, this representation of Native Americans is one of the most satisfying just because they're people at an earlier stage of technology. I'm very over this idea that like, well, what if we brought someone from the Renaissance? You know, an iPad would blow their mind. And you're like, yes, an iPod would blow their mind for an hour mm -hmm. and then they would use it and then they would adapt. Like we're not that much smarter <laughs> than people from hundreds of years ago. Intelligence yeah. isn't the issue. And I think Prey has done a phenomenal job of serving up sort of a depiction of Native Americans, which isn't just idiot, noble, savage, what understand the fire from sky and wigwam. And you're like, no, they're just people. They're like, people. That is yeah, yeah. so much more satisfying than any other sort of hokey depiction of Native Americans. So, and it totally fits in this, uh -huh. in this telling of a savage alien hunter that has an honor code mm -hmm. against this particular tribe of hunter-gatherers from the 1700s. And that, to me, that works. It totally works for me. I made Marie watch it. I mean, she doesn't like Predator movies. You know, you're going to watch well, this movie. By comparison to the original I, I very Predator, much uh, gore, gore, from, from a gore scale, I guess I would say, comparing it to the mm -hmm. original Predator, because we we let Omar watch the original Predator. So we watched that one, and okay. it was that was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Obviously, back then, it was different than when we first watched it. But sure. by comparison, this is um, same level or higher, would you say? Lower. Oh. In fact, it, I, I would say the original rated, Predator... Because it was released as an R. That was the only thing on you know, it. No, it deserves its R rating. But but yeah. the original Predator... So the original Predator also exists on the conceit mm -hmm. of the trick. Uh, again, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen, yeah, the, seen the, original the original Predator movie. with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Turn off this podcast. Go watch that movie. It's fantastic. Yeah. The original Predator was a satirization of 80s action stars. And it's literally the death of the 80s action hero. Mm -hmm. that's what makes the original Predator so brilliant. So the action and the carnage in that movie, you have to set up all of the 80s action hero tropes. Four guys with machine guns can basically wipe out an entire army of, of, of like re re rebels out yeah, in the middle of the forest. Exactly. So you Random start with all four. of the rated R 1980s machine gun violence. None of that is in Prey. No. So you, you don't even have to spend time with that setting up that part of the world because prey doesn't exist as the death of or the satirization of another action trope prey mm -hmm. just kind of starts where in the original predator all of the badass macho steroid riddled dudes with mini guns and rocket launchers start getting picked off oh, okay so there's there's actually less carnage in prey and i feel like the practical effects in the original predator mm -hmm are a lot gorier than some of the more CG enhanced stunts in Prey. Okay. So okay. like if Omar could handle, you know, Carl right. Weathers arm getting blown off by a mm -hmm. laser bolt. I mean, I felt like that was because of the way it was a, a weird yeah, practical right effect. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like that was way worse than some of the similar dismemberings that we see in Prey that you can kind of tell are a little more CGE. Oh than, yeah, no, than no, their yeah. original counterparts. 
no, no, absolutely. I, I will. I'll say this. I will definitely watch it first, and then just to kind of get 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 through that and just get the understanding of it, and then I'll do my second run with them because then it'll be easy for me. Also, in case there are anything that I feel like maybe slightly too much, I can always just skip through because um, with um, like with uh, what's it called Deadpool. Like when we watch Deadpool, there are specific parts of Deadpool that he's not a. It's not right for him to watch yet. Um, and um, so we, I always like try to skip through those because he saw Deadpool two, <laughs> the thirteen, right. the PG thirteen version. But then, you know, Once Upon a Deadpool is brilliant. It's yeah. actually I like Once Upon a uh, Once Upon a uh, Deadpool uh, better uh, than the rated R version. Yeah. No, no, absolutely, I like it. I, and I and if I bought the disc. I bought the disc specifically because we liked it so much. Sure, but it's all because of Fred Savage too. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 absolutely. Yeah, the hilarious. whole yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, oh my god, because he doesn't get it. So I made him watch the Princess Diary first, and then I said. <laughs> Now you get it. Now you know why yeah. I wanted you to watch it. Why is he in the bed? Why? And also, he... Princess Bride is a near perfect movie, oh, and it's oh, hilarious it, and it's it awesome. Has even aged. even Lex oh, has it, sat through, and she it, she was five it, it aged when we so watched beautifully, Princess Bride. Though, right? As a movie, yeah. like you could watch it 20, 30 years later, and you're like, this is still fun. I still like mm -hmm. what I know. What's gonna have? I, I forget. Uh, my, uh, my name is Diego Montoya. You killed my father. Repair die. Uh, Inigo, Inigo Montoya. Montoya. Inigo Montoya. Sorry, yeah, not, yeah, I was Stop like, Stop saying <laughs> that. <laughs> I love it. Christopher Guest is the big heavy bad oh, guy. You're like, that's oh awesome. Um, I do want to just Sorry. address this here real quickly because yeah. I, I feel like Prey is suffering from a conversation on gender roles that I don't think the movie is really trying to promote as okay. much. Um, but Aditi Anil says, my question is, does the entire gender role thing exist pre-colonization? Seems to be very reliant on the men underestimate women trope, which is very much a colonial thing. So, in the movie Prey, we mm -hmm. have a young woman who does not want to be a medicine woman or a gatherer or, you know, just, you know, like tending to the babies. Yeah. She wants to be a hunter. She doesn't necessarily want to be a warrior, she just wants to be a hunter. And if you follow some of the history that we get in different native populations, this would have been a difference tribe by tribe. But the idea of a woman hunter was not outlandish. It wasn't common, but it wasn't completely beyond the pale of... Of, of, of like that being a thing that people would experience, especially the Comanche, mm -hmm. where I feel like that was a, 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 tr a tribe as far as it's been explained to me with my limited understanding of the different regions and tribes of native peoples in the United mm -hmm. States or North America, like that still would have been a thing that could have happened. And so this whole depiction of, of this character, I'm sorry, I've got to spoil just one little thing in, before you watch Prey, the people that are complaining about like, well, gender roles and women can't do anything and men are superior in this and blah, 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 blah. I think they're, they're, they're trying to put broad concepts on individual characters. So I love when people complain about the female protagonist in Prey that she's such a Mary Sue. Nothing she does works in this movie. She's like, the opposite of a Mary Sue, but she's clever. So it's not that she solves every problem, she comes out unscathed and she figures all these things out and she saves the day. Like the movie sets up her learning curve beautifully mm. for everything that she's experiencing and everything they're going through. And when the men are depicted as like, oh, well, women, again, this men are underestimating women. The men aren't underestimating women. The men are properly estimating her because she fails over and over and over again. So this isn't broad. This is very specific to her character in, in, in the depiction that they're going for and why she's sort of uniquely a part of this storyline of aliens coming down and hunting, you know, like it's very specific to her experience, but I, I just really love that. The depiction of native peoples and and not just her like the entire um tribe that she's a part yeah. of they're not idiot knuckle dragging cavemen that just grunted each other i mean as i'm so over that as as sort of the estimation of native american intelligence like yeah, yeah. no i i think we we can give them a bit more credit than that no no absolutely no no I, i'm with you and i and i see yeah I, 
uh bradley's as like anybody remember apocalypto and some of the other yeah no i i am yeah. with you it, there's a lot of good classics out there and prey has been something that i've been like i said towing with so i'll, I'll put that on the on the list better girl soul i have a lot of episodes to go through it's not like you know it, there's there's <laughs> it's a series it's it's definitely a binge watch over a weekend if i have nothing else to do or maybe you know for a flight i may just download a uh, better call Saul for the flight because i uh when in a couple of weeks or so we'll be going to the ifa and i will have a, a very long stint um I couldn't get the glasses. Remember, I was we were talking about trying to see mm -hmm. if we were able to get. Yeah, yeah, no bueno on that one. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I, I can. Yeah, I would definitely download that, and I'll put pray a, a little bit ahead on that. Uh, for me though, um, so for the end of the week, I'm probably going to try to shoot at least one, one video. I have an earfun AirPod, uh, not AirPod, uh, the earfun um, Air S, uh, their new uh, nice. two wireless buds that they came out a couple of days ago. Unfortunately, it was uh, the timing. It, they kind of had the same uh, concern that uh, Xiaomi had with the light uh, with the uh, with the Poco, um, and it was it was uh, sorry. No, I mean Xiaomi. I mean Poco had the they had the the delay with their release, um, and it landed on the same day as the Poco. And I was like, I'm sorry. Oh. I uh, that can't. I, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. So, um, the good thing is they're they're good uh, pair of buds with Aptex, uh, and of mm -hmm. course, uh, long battery life earphones are pretty good and pretty decent uh, tuning, but definitely more of a dance, bassy type of experience. Um, and it won't take too much time, but hopefully next week I'll be able to also do some work. I got the X70. Uh, it's not the X70. The Honor 70. The X70. Um, <laughs> so like, I'm bad with numbers and names. So uh, the Honor 70 is in the house. I put out a video last night, I think, um, doing the unboxing for that. So also want to spend some time with that. Uh, and then maybe we can set some time next week. You and I can maybe hang out. We'll see how our schedules kind of, yeah, um, you know, perk. Uh, come up with I mean, the only other thing i'm going on is like i finally put together my lego iron man so now oh uh, is he the same scale as the hulkbuster that you did you and lex did he's got a oh he's got look a, at that the arc reactor, arc reactor. Yeah, yeah 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 so no no he's actually a fair bit bigger i mean the the hulkbuster that i did with lex is is minifig scale okay, okay oh okay. he's like real dusty that's gross so yeah. so he's oh, oh come on nvidia stop <laughs> well, Nvidia wants to focus on you. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's much bigger. I because remember in the past when you showed me the Hulkbuster, it was closer to the camera, so I couldn't tell the scale, and I haven't been in yeah. a place for some time. So I so really... so Hulkbuster is minifig scale, so you can actually yeah. have a little Iron Man pilot minifig. Yeah, but yeah. this is this is the uh, I forget what they're what they're calling it. This, they they came out with a line that was also supposed to be a part of like Eternals, which no one was really buying Eternals toys. Yeah, but you can get like one of the Eternals as a Lego kit that's similar to this, and okay. that vanished pretty quick. Okay, um, because that was a really miserable movie, and I did not. It was enjoy a, it, it was a it was a tough movie to watch. It was a tough conversation to go through, and realistically, I feel like it. We didn't really need to have that conversation. Let's just say that. Other than the fact that we are, you know, we saw some of the, uh, you know, um, I think you know, the, the the name of the um, not the the galactic creatures, uh, the the Eternals. No, not the eternal. The oh my god, the ones that was actually trying to come out of the earth, isn't it? The is that are they the Eternals? No, I I don't. The, the galactic. Uh, I'll have to figure out. The, what it the, is. the movie mattered not at all. To yeah, no, you could have anymore. skipped that in the so. uh, in in the entire MCU and would not have missed. I'm it. waiting for them to say that was another alternate dimension that didn't happen in this dimension. Just ignore that any of that happened. Our bad. Yeah. yeah. Gil Gilgamesh sounds fun. Say it. Say it. <laughs> I'm I'm mad because like a few of those characters are really interesting to kind of explore, but what we got was just ponderous and dreary, and there was no fun or life in it. And you're like, you had this brilliant cast. You had Salma Hayek. You had. Oh my God. Um, yeah. um, I'm forgetting his name, the uh, Indian actor who I think is hilarious. Oh, and he you was gave him Star an Wars. action role. Yeah, 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 hold on. Um, I, I, I love his performance, and you're like, you made him boring on screen. How, how did you manage that? And it just, it made me real sad. So oh, anyway. um, Kumal. Uh, Kumal. Uh, yeah, Thank Kumal Nanjimani. Uh, hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, just, just very upsetting. So anyway, short story, incredibly long. Incredibly, incredibly they, long. they took that same Lego blueprint from Eternals, Eternals and they made and an they made Iron it Man. Into a man. And the Iron Man's way better. 
Oh, they yeah, needed to recycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kumail, yeah, yeah, exactly. Michael Pepertek, yeah, exactly. Eternal is, uh, Eternal is too long. <laughs> He's Pakistani. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was pretty sure I had that wrong, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I will be skipping that. But you know, for sure, I, I'm at some point, I think over the weekend, I'm sure we're going to be watching Hulk or She-Hulk, and we'll we'll have our conversations. But for sure, Prey Prey will be on my on my radar. Um, next week's going to be just kind of similar, same same old stuff. Um, I want to before Samsung stuff comes in, I do want to do. I want to finish off and put out a video on the nothing, uh, not the nothing, the, the nothing phone one. I finally got a case for it. Um, nice. You know, a little bit of a, a mixed experience as time's been going on with it. I got an update, and of course, I love. I I I will say that the glyph interface does grow on you, and having it, it on, looks cool. Well, so for me, it's more about like. Hold on, let me see. Like, I have it set right now to turn on for music virtualization. So for me, it's more about. So let me shut it off here. Oh, I, it does need audio a little bit. So here, can. Oh, come on. Ah, that's yeah, cool. See? No, it's doing so, it. That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So every time I'm watching a show, I'm like sitting there and there's like lights behind me. They're like, like mood lighting <laughs> kind of going on. Uh, but it has it has it has some some good good things going for it. So I think, yeah. So for me, at least next week, that's going to be one of my focus before Samsung stuff shows up. Um, so I can kind of do kind of like an initial impression on that before I get out. get out because I, I leave on Monday, the, the 29th in the morning. So it's yeah, my my week kind of gets become very hard, and everything has to be done in advance. So, uh, but yeah, that's going to be kind of like mostly it for me. I know nice. um, w hopefully we'll we'll see more stuff. I think you say so. You mentioned possibly something coming up at the end of this week. I I, yeah, I remember maybe. actually. Yeah, depending. I, on again, I had is. a whole bunch of things fall apart. Like what I'm I these I had a couple projects, a couple of them that I I I can't really talk about publicly until I can see if we can make them work yeah, yeah, yeah um they they crack they cratered so bad i think over the next couple of days i'm gonna go back and revisit some of the ideas that i've been wanting to get out and just mm -hmm. haven't had the bandwidth for so okay. next week i'm seriously thinking like that really needs to be like my steam deck follow-up time i i now that I, more I was people hoping have been getting their steam decks yeah I'm, i keep waiting out. for that email it hasn't shown up yet we're getting closer to october let's just say that October so was gonna be i think i time. i think i might end up trying to double up two steam deck videos next week one talking more about the deck some of the recent software patches and just the experience of using it mm -hmm. and then i really want to do that android versus steam deck showdown That'd so probably uh you know kind of uh revisit my um red magic yeah and and what that's, that's a good option like. that's a really good option th yeah. there, there there is something really interesting about you know android gaming a phone with 120 hertz refresh rate display it's an oled i mean mm -hmm. the steam deck is the one of the most brilliant portable gaming devices i've ever played with it's not a foregone conclusion that it would win depending on the kinds of games you like to play so it depends on so. the title. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm I'm looking forward to it as well. And then, <laughs> of course, we have we'll have Saturday morning with the, everything with the the Android Bay. Uh, the, the credentials are who who are we referring to? T. No. Uh, <laughs> the Celestials. You're right. The Celestials. It wasn't the. I don't know why I called them Galactic. Yeah. So it's the Celestials. There was that whole mm, question in right, my right. mind that it, after the end of the movie, you know, you know, they stopped the Celestial from coming out of Earth. But they never buried sure. the celestial. So in theory, somewhere yeah. on this planet in the MCU, <laughs> there's a hand standing up. But anyway, so that that was that was my whole point of trying to say that with the Eternals. I couldn't remember the Celestials. Um, but can it run Crisis? Oh my God, we're back to that question. That was the question that never went away. But it can it can. run? Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but do you remember that for the, the long time? But can it run Crisis though? Um, so uh, and Monday, of course, with the SGTQA, you know, I, I, we're getting to that sweet spot of the the show. Obviously, as uh, there's a lot of things obviously that go on, and I'm I'm kind of rambling for some reason. I don't know why. Next week will definitely be an exciting, another exciting week. Hopefully, we'll be able to contribute to more Hulk Busters and Iron Man's um, as Juan is uh, color coding. Sorry, you're you're se you're creating a good sequence. Your chair is red, your hat is red, and your and and your your figures are red. <laughs> Um, I do want to say thank you to everybody for hanging out with us on this beautiful Thursday night. I don't know if you did or did not get a chance to catch the Northern Lights. Apparently, they were visible. By the time I knew they were going to be visible, it was too late because it was a day later. But some people supposedly said, ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. 
you can you can keep wrapping up the show. I'm just gonna yeah, keep yeah, showing yeah. Up, like, no no I know I just wanted to see the uh, the actual uh, wrap up there and there. So um there's gonna be some conversations. I think the the nothing phone has some potential. I think it does also have some 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 limitations that you need to kind of understand at the price point. But honestly, with the speed and the way I was able to order this and get it delivered, it is super easy to get in the US. It's much easier than some of the other other devices I've seen before, especially because Amazon is in the conversation. So um, I want to say, hope you guys have a great day. If you guys are in the morning, have a good morning and good day on Friday. And of course, uh, we're going to be wrapping it up here. Thank you, Juan, for hanging out with me and, and spending yeah, some time. This is great. The movie part of this, I felt like we got a little bit more lit up uh, at the as we got to the Better Call Saul, Prey, and Dragons, and a whole bunch of different things. We, we, I mean, there's some real good stuff <laughs> out. I mean, was, was I mean good... next week maybe we just need to tank it and and we'll share our thoughts on like Sandman and a whole oh bunch my of god, other... yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to catch up on that one as well. It's sitting in my queue. Uh, so with that being said, I will say be safe, stay safe, do well, and enjoy your your tech, um, and of course have fun. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye for now.